drenched UB Stadium. Martin with the carry. And should get to midfield, which will give him enough for a first down. So the Falcons have a nice drive going here on their second possession. It's important for Bowling Green, Howard, I think, to get going and maybe have a successful scoring drive here early in the game to try and forget about another devastating loss last week. They lost on the last play to Ohio by, on a, a last-second field goal. It was the seventh time uh, over the last two seasons that the Falcons had lost on the game's final play. I mean, that is just absolutely devastating for teams to be in it, have a chance to win, and they continue to find ways to lose, and last week they lose by a point. They had a heartbreaker earlier this season that UB can relate to. We'll tell you about that in a moment. This one batted up, intercepted! And Stephen Means, he's going all the way! Touchdown, Buffalo! Well, Bowling Green there decides to go away from the rushing attack that had been so great getting themselves out of their own end in the UB territory. And the first time they put it up in the air, batted pass and means right in the right spot at the right time. The local product out of Grover Cleveland High School coming up with a big play there. And means a great athlete. He's a good basketball player at Grover Cleveland too there. Using his speed to pull away. Only Bulls were going to catch him on that play as he gets into the end zone easily. This looks like he's going up for a loose ball there. That's right. Huh? So Stephen Means, his first interception of the season. Bulls get the defensive touchdown, and they go up 9 nothing. And there was a penalty on the Bulls on the play. <laughs> Look at the flag. <laughs> they, tried, they tried throwing the penalty flag, and it just kind of <laughs> went backwards. Tough day for everybody in the win. So they get Sean, him for celebration, I think, on that. <laughs> yeah, probably. I assume they'll mark it off on the kick. Sean Smith, our referee, ev eventually retrieves the uh, penalty flag. Not weighted enough to handle the breeze here today. Shum to hold on the extra point for Clark, and he's perfect on extra points this season as well. Trying to give UB the double-digit lead. His kick is up. And it is good. Bulls got off to a good start last week against Akron. Off to a very good start here today as well. Now 10 nothing Buffalo. 7.58 to go for the scorer. Steve Means and the defense scores. Patrick Mark caps it off. The Bulls are rolling. The time for a cable sports test. Let's take a look at the local edge edge, edge to Matt Schultz, although that last play he'd like back. He has had a better season than Chaz Anderson. Brandon Oliver and the Bulls get the edge on the running game. Defensively, UB sixth in total defense. Bowling Green is eighth. Toss-up on the special teams, although UB had a great game on special teams last week. Intangibles, we've got uh, an edge to Buffalo. Hey, you know, it's your home. Uh, so UB gets the edge on local edge edge. Hey, Bowling Green, you know you had to travel Thanksgiving away from home. Uh, and they, they had Thanksgiving together as a team yesterday, as did the UB Bulls. So Patrick Clark ready to kick it off. Again, they move the ball back because of the penalty. And the ball goes over Boo Boo Gates. He picks it up now, finally picks it up at around the two-yard line, trying to gain back some steam. So... The Bulls do a nice job, get a break from Gates, who might have had some issues seeing that ball coming in at them. And they'll start around their 20-yard line. Yeah, it looked like the sun may have blinded him, the sun coming right in that direction. The interception by Means, it's his second ever career interception. The last time UB had an interception return for a touchdown, Mike Newton, a game in Temple at Lincoln Financial Field. That was back in 2007, September 8th. So it's been a little while since they've had an interception return for a score and means they're putting UB up now by 10. You and I were at that game. Yeah. That was a blowout win that day. Big day a fun for day. the Bulls offensively. Yeah. So Bowling Green now down 10 nothing at their own 20-yard line. Again, still going into the wind, and there's still 7.50 left in the first quarter. They try the end around, and that's Cooper with it, and he's got some room. Leaps over an offensive lineman and gets across the 30-yard line. So Eugene Cooper, you know, if you can't get him involved in the passing game, get him involved in the running game and get the ball in his hands. That's exactly what they want, and we, we talked about it ahead of time, that they want to get Cooper the ball in space, able to 
use his athleticism to make plays. You see it there even just running over one of his linemen with a nice uh, hurdle. You can't throw it in this wind right now. Get him the ball on an end around. That was Jordan Russo's the right tackle who went down. He's in the game. You see him in his right tackle spot. He walked back a little gingerly. They cannot afford any more injuries on offense. Jamel Martin with the carry. Not much of a gain there as the Bulls' defense shuts him down. Boy, Brian, they really got a boost. The Bulls' defense did in that win over Akron. They've really been struggling. Six straight 30-plus point games, and they shut down the zips completely. Yeah, it's got to give them confidence coming into today, too. This BG offense is definitely leaps and bounds better than the zips offense, and we'll probably see it more in their passing attack when they flip ends into the second quarter, uh, not with having to go into this gusty wind so much. Schultz looks to the sidelines, gets the call. Bulls rush four, handoff. Martin again, nice wall of defenders there for Buffalo. A wall of blue, and it's going to be third down and long for the Falcons. Yeah, Branch in there coming through with a beautiful play. Uh, he able to get in there along with Richie Smith. The two of them combined. And now this sets up exactly what you want for UB in this quarter. A must-throw situation for BG into this wind. And the defensive backs, again, have to be aware you're almost playing the ball much more so than you are the receiver at this point because that wind can shift it at any moment. Third down and nine. Bowling Green going with a four-receiver formation. And we mentioned the secondary has had its issues this season. A little dump off. Eric Geiger breaks some tackles. Ooh, and he's hit hard at about the 37-yard line. Well short of a first down. Good pursuit by the Bulls' defense. Khalil Mack, Stephen Means among the defenders down there. Fred Branch didn't make the tackle, but he makes the play that stops it short of a first down. He grabbed Martin, as you'll see it here on the replay. Watch number 42 in blue right here. Breaks through two blocks to hold up Martin just enough to allow three other Bulls to come in. If he doesn't make that, it's going to be very close for BG to maybe pick it up that first down. Very good start for the Bulls' defense. Two three and outs and the interception touchdown. The low punt by Schmidtebush. Takes first the UB bounce. Now they get a few more yards out of it. Akoya Houston just watching it roll dead. And a touch by Bowling Green. So the Bulls defense comes out with a 10-0. They'll take over at their own 34. First quarter action continues. You be in Bowling Green in a moment on Time Warner Cable Sports. The Enforcers every Monday night at 6.30 on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. You be taking over from their 34. First down carry for Oliver. Maybe a gain of a yard or so. The Bulls have a... Patrick Clark field goal from 31 yards. And then Stephen Means, interception return for a touchdown. We're, let's check in on the sideline. The third member of our broadcast crew, Dave Miller, trying to deal with not getting blown out of the stadium. And the Bowling Green defense comes up with a play here as Chaz Anderson is picked off by Boo Boo Gates. He goes down the sideline. So Brian Bowling Green doing nothing offensively gets a big break here from their defense. That's a throw that Anderson just can't make. And I don't know what he's looking at. If just a stop route over on the far side. And I think it was just I'm going to pull the trigger on it no matter what. I mean, it's well covered uh, as you see there. The BG player standing in front of Marcus Rivers. That's just a poor decision from Anderson. And his defense playing great. You got a chance to really take a stranglehold of this game if you can go down and get points. Instead now, BG's right back in it. They got a chance to get in on a first and goal situation. Yeah, and you know, again, you got the wind at your back and all that stuff. You see Gates, the sophomore, with the pick. The ninth interception of the season for Chaz Anderson. And they start at the Bulls. Six yard line, so a first and goal for Matt Schiltz and the Bowling Green offense. They try and get on the board here, down 10 nothing with 4.47 to go in the first quarter. Throws for the end zone, caught, touchdown. One play, one touchdown. It's Cooper. Right, and uh, sorry, yeah. Or Jordan, excuse me. Kamar Jordan in the end zone. And uh, that quickly, Bowling Green capitalizes on the turnover. So the Bulls' defense scored a touchdown. Bowling Green's essentially gave their offense one to score. 
So it's the 11th touchdown of the season, and uh, we talked about his size in the pregame, and there it is right there. Able just to, one of those push-offs that you'll never get called just to get enough separation. And a nice job by the quarterback to put it in a spot where he can use his height to make the catch. So Kamar Jordan gets Bowling Green on the board. And the extra point on the way is good from Steve Stein. So the Falcons capitalize on the interception. You see the senior hoping to go out on his with his Bowling Green career on the high note. Jordan gets the touchdown, a six-yard pass. And the cheerleading crew here from Bowling Green enjoying that one. Finally, they get something to cheer about. It is 10-7 Buffalo with 4.44 to go in the first quarter. Kamar Jordan is a player that maybe you want to keep an eye on someday in terms of the pros. He's a senior. He's had pro scouts at him all day. As you see him here, he just uses height. Decent coverage, but like I said, uses the inside arm to just create a, just enough of a push-off to create separation. Those kind of plays never get called in terms of interference. And then uh, the high throw, able to use his height and uh, make the easy catch for the score. Well, that'll be a uh, kickoff coming up for the moment for UB, and that would bring Brandon Murray onto the field, who had a big day last week returning kicks for the UB Bulls. This was the opening kick of the game last week. Here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet, Brandon Murray took it, and Brandon Murray was off to the races. Got some good blocks, broke a couple of tackles, and then it was a foot race down the sideline. They eventually caught up to Murray, but uh, that was a 93-yard kick return, and uh, you see his numbers on the season. Javon Gill also returned 157 yards last week, so big day for the UB special teams, and that really set the tone. The Bulls scored right away on that and uh, never looked back, and they just blew out the zips, and it all started on Brandon Murray's kick return. What a way to see the Iroquois product. Yeah, what a way to start the game, the uh, local kid, as you just mentioned, and Last week, him becoming a yard away from scoring on the opening play. Now, we were watching Kyle Burkhardt as the kicker for Bowling Green. He was really kicking low, as low as possible line drives on the kickoffs because you can't get that ball up into the, to the jet stream when you're, you're one, into it. Yeah, if you're one of the UB up men here, be careful. This yep. ball could go at you right away, and if it, gets, if it gets hit into you, it's a live football. They've got to be very aware and be ready here. This ball could be coming at them. Miriam Gill are back for the Bulls. He does try and get this one up, and it's going to hit the wind and come down at about the 32-yard line. Murray runs up to get it, gets across the 40. Actually, that's not bad compared yeah. to what we saw in warm-ups. That's, that's not a bad kickoff for Burkhart, and the Bulls get a, a good drive start here. We have a bull shaken up on the play. 59. And that will be... Shaquille Dudley for the Bulls, sophomore linebacker out of Cardinal O'Hara, is going to limp off to the sideline. Well, Chance Anderson's got to forget about that last pass and just understand right now he's got the wind at his back. He has the lead. The defense is playing wonderful. He doesn't have to force the issue. I think on that last pass, that was just almost a little bit more robotic. If the play is called for the stop route over on the sidelines, I'm going to throw it no matter what. He didn't even look, and Boo Boo was standing right there to grab that play. No, it's too easy for me to say that, so I'll just leave it alone. <laughs> From the 42, <laughs> first down, right up the middle, the running game. Brandon Oliver gets across the 45-yard line. An easy way to forget about it is to give it to uh, your best <laughs> offensive player. Too. It's not a bad watch, idea. <laughs> hand it, and then you got the best view to watch Brandon Oliver go through the line. When you got 32 in blue, and, and give the line credit. Look at the push they've got. Nice hole for Oliver to get through. The O-line, Matt Ostrowski talking about it this week with the media. They really put a lot of pride into their offseason, adding weight, hitting the weight room, getting stronger because they knew there'd be more of a commitment to the run. Oliver trying to power his way forward. He'll get a gain of a yard or so. Last year it was a little bit more pass happy, and it didn't work out. And this year they've made more of a, it's been more of a run-first mentality for the Bulls. So Oliver now needing just 37 yards. We'll keep an eye on that to pass the single season record from Starks. Likely barring anything uh, of an injury of note here. We expect that to happen at some point today. We'll keep you updated after each of his carries this afternoon. Third down and five. Bowling Green showing blitz. Four receiver set. They drop back into coverage. Anderson with time to the near sideline and it hops to Devin Hughes incomplete. 
And that pass across the field, he's throwing from the far hash all the way to the to the to what would be the opposite sidelines for him in front of the BG bench. The wind looks like it's at your back, but there's also some crosswind. Is it coming out of the southwest? Does it just shut that ball right down? Got to be tighter passes over the middles, things like that, where you can throw it in the receiver's body, and that one just, that's all wind, just shutting it down there. Jacob Shum on the punt, first uh, punt for him today, averages 40 yards, and it's Boo Boo Gates, one hand up, he is looking into the sun, remember the kickoff went over his head, he couldn't see it, he is awaiting the punt, nice high punt, and I think that was a fair catch, yes, <laughs> Gates calling a fair catch at the 19-yard line. So maybe Bowling Green has a little momentum now. They got the turnover, they got the touchdown, and then they forced UB to punt. Of course, this is the last game for uh, not only the UB seniors here today, but for the BG seniors. And there's a, a good Bowling Green contingent, I think, that has made the trip from Western Ohio to come on down. I think they guys take the, the 90 interstate the whole way, right? Yeah, yeah, it's an easy trip. Yeah, We've done it. I mentioned earlier, you know, you were talking earlier about some of their heartbreaking losses, and I mentioned, uh, you mentioned the game at o uh, against Ohio. The last game Bowling Green played, they lost on a field goal as time expired. They lost a game on a missed extra point at the end. That sounds familiar. Schiltz, handoff on first down, and the Bulls come up and stop it for a loss. BG lost to Wyoming by one earlier this season as Jamel Martin is tackled. Kind of reminds you of what happened with the Bulls against Northern Illinois in the, in the game that looked like it was going to overtime. Yeah, a great comeback for UB on home turf, and then Farden ended up missing the extra point. It was at that point in the season for UB where it seemed like they couldn't do anything right, and it was really more of a what are we doing to hurt ourselves sort of mentality, and that was another example of it. You know, you, and you just you do woulda, coulda, shoulda sometimes. That game, the Ball State game, you think about games if they, you know, were a few points different, maybe things would be a little bit different for UB here rather than just playing out the string in the finale against Bowling Green today. Bull show and blitz. Here they come after Schiltz gets it away quickly, incomplete. He wanted Jordan on the far sideline. And uh, a little bit a uh, little bit off target. Maybe Jordan felt some people coming his way either, or as well, I should say. Ball State, a game that the Bulls led late, gave up a game-winning drive. As we take another look at that pass to Kamar Jordan and the Northern Illinois game, Brian, I mean, it's again, it's woulda, coulda, shoulda. You turn those around and they're, you know, maybe finishing up 5-3 and three this season if they get a win today. But instead they're going for 3-5. and five. Third down and 10. Schultz to his right. On the run, throws. Nice throw and catch for the Falcons at a first down. Sean Joplin. With the catch, the sophomore from Sylvania, Ohio. Nice rollout throw for Schiltz. That's not an easy throw from Schiltz in this wind and on your feet. He didn't really have to set himself. This is a good route by Joplin, too. He created nice space when he cut out. Make sure that he gets beyond the first down marker. How many times, Howard, do we see a receiver run that comeback route and they realize they've caught it and they're one yard behind the first down marker? Instead, he's a good two to three yards beyond it. That's a smart route by the receiver, Joplin, there. Well, he's got, you'd think, another couple of really good years ahead of him at Bowling Green. Just a sophomore, the quarterback, who wasn't planning on playing at Bowling Green as they go with the run on first down here. Gain of maybe a couple on the play. Schiltz was actually headed to Kansas State. He was recruited by Warren Ruggiero. Ruggiero's right now the offensive coordinator at Bowling Green. He was on the staff at K-State, recruited Schiltz from California. He was going to K-State. They had a coaching change, cleared out the staff. Ruggiero ends up going to Bowling Green, and Matt Schiltz followed him to Bowling Green, which is great for Dave Clawson. Absolutely, and I think that they'll have, uh, obviously, a couple more solid seasons out of him. They like his arm. They like his leadership. Tough as nails, you know, top character kind of guy. And, and heck, you know, he's a sophomore playing his final game of his second year. He's already thrown for more than 5,000 passing yards. Big hit from Branch on yeah, that Yeah, Fred play. Branch, the Bulls' leading tackler, steps up and stops the running play. He's had a really good start to this game so far. But back on Schultz a little more. I mean, we've talked about it so many years, Howard, of us watching these MAC teams. There you see the replay again. Watch Branch just come in right there and make the stop. Good tackle. The quarterbacks in the MAC, they can put up some great numbers. And, you know, to have two solid careers in already and you're still just finishing up your sophomore year, I mean, these could, this could end up being a very uh, successful career for BG. And 
you just have good QBs in the MAC, you always have a chance to win. It's more of the one of the more wide open conferences in all of college football. Third and six, pick Courtney Lester comes up with the second interception of the day for the Bulls, and they'll take over inside the Bowling Green 30. Well, it's almost identical to the play that Anderson threw for UB, and as we're complimenting Schiltz, he ends up making almost the same mistake that we had to call out Anderson for. It's one of those throws where you've got to go ahead and, make, and look before you make this throw. I know the play call says quick hitch route over the middle, but if the defensive back standing right in between you and the receiver, you cannot make that foot. You cannot make that throw. I know the blitz was coming. It's probably the hot read on that play, but you've got to be a little bit more aware before you make that throw and just let it go without even looking. So Courtney Lester, the redshirt freshman from Miramar, Florida, who was a wide receiver that they moved to cornerback, comes up with his second interception of the season from the Bowling Green 28. Anderson hit as he releases, tipped and out of bounds. Nice play defensively there for Bowling Green as Keith Morgan got over to knock that ball away from Fred Lee, the intended receiver. Lee with a couple of touchdowns last week, but now maybe those uh, each of poor decisions by each of the quarterback will balance out. Anderson's Oops. helmet almost getting knocked off <laughs> on that play. Helmet popped up a yep. little bit there on the pressure, yep. Second down and 10 with 31 seconds to go here in the first quarter. UB jumped out to a 10-0 lead. Bowling Green has the last touchdown of the game. And there goes Brandon Oliver. And Oliver's still going. Check that, Chaz Anderson. My bad. See, I'm just trying to get him the record. <laughs> Let's have to be patient. So Anderson, we mentioned he, he can run, Brian. He's, he set the UB single-season record for rushing yards by a quarterback. We saw this big run at Tennessee earlier in the ball game in our telecast. You look at his numbers right there. So you got to respect that. Now, normally you'd let the quarter expire here, but you got the wind you take it here, especially if it's a passing play. First down from the 18. They'll give it to Oliver. This time I got it right. He got across the 15-yard line down near maybe the 13, and that'll be the last play of the quarter. Patrick Clark field goal. Stephen Means hit six. And then a touchdown pass from Schultz to Jordan. That's the score. And UB on top of 10-7. Threatening we get back to the second quarter. Sports Wow, the fans are having a good time. <laughs> Is he drinking anything of that stuff? Uh, just a little shower as we get. Uh, it's a party atmosphere, you know. It's the day after Thanksgiving, you know. Students are on break. People are, you know, no having classes. a good time. No, right? That's right. We get ready for second quarter action here. Bulls have a second and five at the Bowling Green 13. Howard Simon, Brian Kozil, Dave Miller here at UB Stadium. It's a handoff to Brandon Oliver, or, and uh, yeah, maybe maybe a half a yard on the play. We mentioned our sideline reporter, the Honorable David Miller. He is down by the Bowling Green bench. Mr. Miller? Third down, Oliver's got to get to the 12. He's still going, still going. The line helping him. Now it's just a, I think he got it. I think he did. That play was stopped around the 10-yard line. He just turned his back and kept pushing his legs. And a first down for Brandon Oliver, all five foot eight, 200 pounds of him, took everything he had. Coach Quinn said that this guy is the hardest working guy on this team. And there's just another example of it on the field. Watch here. He's first hit at the 10. Watch the like the legs continue to drive. He's even going backwards, continuing to push the pile. There's five or six white jerseys in there. And there was a little push from a couple of offensive linemen, but not much. Oliver breaking tackles towards the end zone. Touchdown, Brandon Oliver. UB Bulls extend their lead to 16-7 to early on in the second quarter. Seven-yard run for Oliver. He goes in. 
scoring last week as well, and the Bulls get that double-digit lead back, and that's also got to make Chaz Anderson feel better because he threw the poor pass that ended up giving Bowling Green a touchdown on their next play, and then Schiltz, of course, did it for BG, and the UB defense bailing out his quarterback there, and then they're able to go down and convert and get the 10-point lead back if this extra point goes through. Patrick Clark for the extra point, and it is good. Brandon Oliver with his 13th rushing touchdown of the season, three shy of the school's single-season record. Bulls capitalize off the Courtney Lester takeaway, and they're up 17-7 over Bowling Green. Early second quarter on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Buffalo able to get their 10-point lead back as we welcome you back here to UB Stadium, courtesy of the sophomore running back, Brandon Oliver, capping a six-play, 28-yard drive in a minute 37. And there you see it there. One move from Oliver at all is all it took. He's able to bounce into the end zone and score. Oliver so far on the day, 12 carries, 48 yards, and a touchdown. Remember, he came into today needing 66 yards. So he's under 20 to go, only needs 19 more to beat the single-season record from James Starks. Good job by, among others, Jason Carlson, Andre Davis, and that Bulls offensive line. You could see the push they had to the left to open up the room for, uh, for Oliver, and he did break a tackle to get through. Patrick Clark into the wind on the kickoff. Goes with the high kick, and it works. Boo Boo Gates has to go back. It's over his head. He's got it at the 10, curls down to the 6 before he comes up field. Good pursuit by the Bulls. Gates trying to get to the edge at the 20 and knocked out of bounds. Good kick coverage. Nope, late flag. Well, it was good kick coverage, but then it was a late flag. So yeah, it's going to nullify it. <laughs> They're going to add 15 yards onto it for UB, and that's not a smart play. Do a nice job in coverage that. Don't waste it on that. We've seen that now. That ball, personal foul, late hit. Kicking team, number 37. Team on. First down. We've seen that now twice where BGs have trouble judging the wind on kickoffs. See, watch out here how he's out of bounds late. It's Kari Brown will come into your screen, 37 in blue, as they knock him out of bounds. And then right. And he's out. Actually, it's 47. Yep. So that would be Imani Chapman. And uh, that tacks on the yardage, brings it up to the 39-yard line for Bowling Green. And not that hard of a hit. No, but, but it's... It's, out of, it's bounds, out of bounds, and the return man has also given himself up. You can say he stopped any sort of pursuit upfield at that point. So Matt Schultz in the offense on the field. Neither quarterback has been able to get the passing game going today, no matter who is going into the wind or wind at their back. Jamel Martin with the handoff on first down. Gets about uh, three, maybe four yards. Brian, look at the passing numbers. And Schultz in the first quarter going into the wind, three for eight. One touchdown, two interceptions, 23 yards. Anderson had the wind at his back. He didn't complete a pass. He was 0 for 4 and threw a bad pick. Some quarterbacks will say that it's tougher to throw with the wind behind you because you lose control of it with all that force behind you, especially when you're running those timing routes. We saw him try to hit Marcus Rivers on that fade into the end zone. Throwing into the wind, the ball might get shut down, but it's also maybe safer throws in the fact that you know they're not going to get out and uh, possibly get intercepted like we saw the two from Schiltz. Martin on second down. It's up to about the 45-yard line. Should bring up a third down and four. Either way, it's not easy for either quarterback, and the stats definitely back that one up. But you just got to, I think, decide what kind of routes to run. When you've got the wind at your back, you've got to make sure that those timing routes and some of those things along the sidelines, you just avoid them at that point. Those are your screens, your over-the-middles, curl routes, things like that. And if you're going into the wind, those are especially the ones maybe avoid the ones where you have to throw along the side because that's where the ball can get shut down when you're getting out there where there's less bodies and the winds to break it. Scott Pettigrew, number 33, coming up nicely on that last play on run defense. Third down and four. Schiltz back to pass. They rush four to the far side, incomplete. He wanted Kamara Jordan in front of the UB bench. It is off target, so the Bulls defense gets the stop. And that'll bring out the punt unit for Bowling Green. It's pretty good coverage on that play from Lester. That would have had to have been an absolutely perfect throw, and I don't even know if it would have been enough for a first down. And Lester, we know, already had the interception, so he's having a good start to this day. And Schmidtbush is on to punt. 
McCoy Houston back to receive it for the Bulls. This has uh, not been a strength for the Bulls, oh. the punt game. Wow, that ball just sails over Houston. It hits at the five, and it rolls into the end zone. Yeah, that would be Brian Colzer going, oh. That, it's like it hit a jet stream, and then, I mean, he's got a pretty strong leg anyway. Shot out of a cannon on that one. All right. Five yards on the punt. UB ball, they're 20 when we get back, and they're up 10 on Time Warner Cable Sports. You get a good look at the Youngstown, New York native Dave Clawson in his third season as head coach at Bowling Green, a 13 and 23 record overall, nine and 14 in the MAC. On the other side, it's Jeff Quinn in his second season with the UB Bulls, trying to double their win output from his first year when they were two and ten. If they win today, they would up their record to four and eight. Jeff Quinn has got family in town this week for Thanksgiving, and they're I'm sure here at the stadium rooting on. Jeff today. First down, Anderson. Just so you know, Brandon Oliver is 18 yards away from breaking James Stark's single season rushing record. And there you see the soft, uh, sophomore running back. Two more years left for Brandon in the UB program and has been such a big part of the offense this season. He's already set the single season record for most carries for UB running back, and he's got a chance if he tops 100 to break the school record for most 100-yard games in a season as well. Play fake to Oliver. Anderson under pressure, dumps it off to Alex Dennison. He's hit right away and knocked out of bounds. So that'll bring up a third down for the Bulls. We were on our way out of media day this week, and uh, Jeff Quinn was there. His sister-in-law came in, and, and her kids wanted to say I had Uncle Jeff, so we know he's got family here. And as we take a look at the last play Anderson improvising a little bit here under pressure that's just the check down route Fred Lee was the, probably the, the uh, deeper route on the same sidelines but the pressure was coming for Anderson Lee couldn't even finish his route if so Anderson had to dump it off short third down and five Bulls going with an empty backfield now Oliver motions back there and uh, the BG defense makes the stand yeah they were ready for that one so a nice job by Bowling Green to respond after the last touchdown drive for Buffalo, and they'll force the punt here. Jacob Shum will come back out for Buffalo for his second punt of the afternoon. Well, UB's in the first quarter did what they had to do. They decided to take the wind on the coin toss, and you're up 10 after the first quarter. You probably sign up for that. In fact, as we said, uh, minus the mistake from Anderson, they would have been up maybe possibly... Uh, more at that point as so we get a flag before the punt goes here. All right, to the snap. Ball start. Offense number 22. Five-yard penalty. Remains to the down. That's uh, Naja Johnson. Did you get a good look at the Bulls mentor there? Jeff Quinn, the head coach, who talked this week about the importance of winning this game and getting a winning home record. Quinn's Bulls would be 4-2 and two at UB Stadium this season if they beat Bowling Green today. First, It would be their first winning home record since 2008, the year they won the MAC championship. Shum under pressure. They got a piece of it. They got a piece of it. The ball hits it at the 25. And the Falcons will get out of the way. Ray Hudson in on the block for BG. Sprung right through. And so, that'll give BG outstanding field back. They'll try and carve into that 10-point UB lead. Bowling Green ball when we get back. Welcome back to UB Stadium. While we were gone, Bowling Green's offense took the field, and in one play, they found their way to the end zone. Here's Matt Schiltz on that first play after the blocked punt. And a beautiful throw to Eugene Cooper right up the middle of the defense. That's a 28-yard touchdown for the Bowling Green Falcons. They hit the extra point. So the Falcons within three. And again, Brian, all set up by the special teams play. Two mistakes the UB's done. As the, they've had a punt blocked and interception. Both led to UB scores. And BG both times 
has gone for the jugular. They've thrown pass plays right out of the big turnover. And then this one you see right there, beautiful throw with the wind helping him on his back. And Cooper got a nice separation to make that. And for Cooper, uh, he amongst those uh, of the big receiving core that BG had today that we said the secondary has to keep an eye on. Cooper on the season now has caught eight touchdowns. So he and Jordan, who's both scored today, we said the UB secondary to keep an eye on them, and now they've both gotten themselves TD tallies today. Well, the ball teed up at the 30-yard line for Stein. The kickoff goes high and to one of the up men. I think it's Colby Way, yep. defensive lineman. How about that? Good catch. <laughs> so Colby Way gets into the into the kick return stats for the Bulls, something I'm sure he wasn't anticipating this season. Way a uh, second-half starter of the season this year, and we mentioned last week on that academic All-American candidate list. Now he's contributing as well offensively. He's pretty much been the regular starter on the defensive line for the second half of the season. Well, Dave Clawson has to like the fight in his Falcons today. Last game of the year, they've lost three straight. They're on the road. Down 10 nothing, really fast, and they have fought back into this football game. What I like, too, is while UB is down after making the big mistake twice, they've gone for the jugular right away. They've gone to the end zone, and they've converted on both of them. Uh, you know, that, that's a sign. That's that killer instinct. That you got to feel that your opponent's not. Let's go at them right away, and they've done that twice. Bulls go to Brandon Oliver on first down. Not much there for Oliver, and... Uh, you or excuse me, Bowling Green's defense and their run defense has been suspect this season. Has done a very solid job today. I'm Brandon Oliver. I know he's approaching the, the record and all of that, but he's a guy coming off a 235 yard performance last week against Akron, and the BG defense has yet to give up big plays to Brandon Oliver. Gain a two on the first down play, second down and two. Bulls leading now 17 14 with about nine and a half to go here in the second quarter. Anderson leaving the pocket. Now throws it away. Got contact, but that ball was going out of bounds. Marcus Rivers knocked down on the play, but that ball was into the Bowling Green sideline. Yeah, just incidental contact and with the ball clearly landing in the BG sidelines, and there's not even any sort of thought of any sort of interference there. You can see that they wanted to hit the curl route right away, and that wasn't open. Now Anderson just trying to buy himself some time and takes a big hit at the end there, getting driven into the turf. Defensively for Bowling Green, coming in was Paul Swan to make that hit. Third down and eight. UB with a four-receiver set. Oliver in the backfield. Falcons rush four. Oliver gets the pass, makes one man miss. Brandon Oliver gets first down yardage. Can't say enough about Oliver Howard. This guy makes something out of nothing all the time. It is amazing, if you rack through how many plays that he has touched the ball this season, rushing or catching, how many times he makes the first man miss. I mean, it happens virtually all the time. Watch it out here in the flat. Breaks one tackle, goes around another, puts his shoulders down in between two BG players and grabs the first down. First and ten, quick pass to Ed Young. Gets a nice block from Marcus Rivers to get a few more yards on the play. In addition to Oliver's rushing talents. He is the third leading receiver on this team behind Marcus Rivers and Alex Nutz. And Nutz, of course, is uh, now out for the season. Lost a couple weeks ago with an injury. And in this offense where they spread it around, if your back can catch it, I mean, that's you don't have to substitute all the time. And this is what Jeff Quinn wants. He wants a workhorse running back. Well, you got to be able to catch in this offense too. So that's why Oliver gets to stay out there on the field, even on pass plays. Four yard gain on first down. Four receiver set. Draw play for Oliver. Caught from behind and uh, gets, still gets a gain of a couple of yards on the play. Great thing this, too, about Oliver. We've seen it, too, with that rushing play down near the goal line, Howard, where he ended up carrying the whole pile. Is third and five, third and six, plays like this where you normally would definitely consider them to be passing downs. You can still hand off to Oliver. You can still throw him swing passes, and they still have just as much of an opportunity to pick up first downs as you would maybe some other plays that you'd consider to be a little bit more of a gamble. Third down and four. Oliver gets the carry. And Oliver drives forward for another first down. It's a good call because Bowling Green actually showed like they were coming and they dropped off. But then give Brandon Oliver credit. credit that play was stopped. 
Oliver making me sound good there, Howard. Look at, it's a third and a four, and we said normally you'd think pass here, but when you know that he's going to make the first guy miss on a consistent basis, instead of a hit at the line of scrimmage for no gain, watch the broken tackle right there. Then he's able to keep those legs going, drive forward, and pick up just the one extra yard that he needs to get the first down. And that uh, Oliver had an issue with the shoe. He's going to go off for Javon Gill. Now the Bulls call a timeout. That's not just any tackler. That guy, number five in white, who bounced off, that's Dwayne Woods. That's their leading tackler. He's one of the best tacklers in the MAC. And Brandon Oliver able to break his tackle attempt to get the first down for the Bulls. Oliver now with 59 yards today, only needs seven more. To break James Starks, James Starks' single season record and also this all-purpose yards with what he's doing receiving today. He only needs 84 to become the all-time leader there. That one may be going to take a little bit more work, but he could be just one carry away here from breaking Starks' record. He just needs seven. It's pretty impressive too, Brian. You, you saw a lot of James Starks, an electric player here, and obviously now playing in the National Football League and doing very well for himself. He, he would have... Some amazing games when he played here for UB. And, and, and to say that Oliver is in that area statistically right now and might act, and will probably pass him really says a lot about Oliver. Yeah, two different kind of runners, too. Oliver low to the ground, uh, keeping the legs running. Starks ran a little higher than the normal running back. In fact, and uh, they both, though, had the knack for big plays. That's definitely something you can say that both of them had. From the 45, first and 10, both. That's Alex Dennison in motion. Oliver back after the timeout. And Brandon Oliver gains three, maybe four yards as the, he creeps closer. Is that the respect that Coach Quinn has for Brandon Oliver and how important <laughs> he is on the out. offense? <laughs> that because his shoe is off, instead of bringing in the backup tailback, and, right. and this is Run no shot play. at Javon Gill in any yeah. way. This yeah. is just, we're going to use the timeout here because our best player is coming off the field. We want to make sure he's on. Right. I mean, well, it's... You know, you know, I guess you don't want to lose the first down yep. play with Brandon Oliver on the bench. Second down. Anderson to the right. Throws for the near sideline, complete by Ed Young. And he is about a yard shy. Had to get to the 35-yard line. Been an up-and-down season for Ed Young. Senior from Fort Worth, Texas. Had some drops earlier in the season. And uh, has probably not put up the numbers he wanted to put up this season. But he makes a nice catch there to bring up third down and one. Oliver has 63, Howard, so three or more on this play will get it done. He is in the backfield. Bulls go with a two tight end set. Here come the extra run defenders, and Oliver gets right through there and across the 30-yard line, and there is the record for Brandon Oliver. Move aside, James Starks. This is a new man atop the single-season rushing list, and it's that guy right there. The sophomore from Miami, Florida, Brandon Oliver. Congratulations to Oliver. That's an outstanding accomplishment. And you see it here. And, of course, even just in terms of the importance of the drive, another big first down run where he continues to just break the tackle of the first attempt from BG's defense. Bulls at the 28-yard line. Drive began at their own 30. And uh, so it is the best offensive drive of the day so far. First and 10. They fake it to Oliver. Anderson forced out of the pocket and in trouble. Throws smartly. Throws it away. Good decision there. That had disaster written all <laughs> over it. I think for a moment he thought about, I'm going to turn backwards and go the other way. Especially thrown into the wind and your feet aren't set. There you see the numbers again, though, for Oliver. Most rushing yards by a UB tailback. The pressure on that last play by Ted Willett and Charlie Walker. And, uh, again, Anderson making the right choice just to get rid of that football and live to play another down. Second down and 10. As we saw that last Oliver carry one more time. Bulls up three, 17-14 in the final game of the season for both of these squads. Anderson keeps it, gets outside, gets across the 20-yard line. Shouldn't be enough for a first down. He had to get beyond the uh, 18. And it is a first down Bulls in the red zone now. Part of the reason we say that Anderson's had so much success rushing the football this year is because a lot of these times when you're faking a handoff to number 32, Brandon Oliver, the defense has to respect it so much. It does open up spaces for Anderson, and you see it as an example on that play. 
The senior from Ohio back under center now on first and 10. The give to Brandon Oliver right through the middle. Oliver keeps going and gets inside the 10 yard line. Oliver again at the end of runs, able to push forward and twist his body and turn it for another extra yard or two. You know what, Brian? One of the, uh, again, one of the things that's impressive about him is the workload. Look at him. I mean, he's built solid. He's 200. He's about 5'8. But he's approaching 300 carries this season. He's like third or fourth, I think, in the country in terms of the number of carries this season. And, and he doesn't seem to tire. You know, he always has that extra kick. Second down and about two. They've got to get to the eight-yard line here. The give to Oliver. And uh, it's close. We'll see where they spot it. I think he's going to be short. Yeah, yeah he'll be yard. short. Third down and maybe a yard. So we talked about James Starks and what a great career Starks had here at UB. Drew Willie handing off the Starks here. Big, huge part of the 2008 squad that won a MAC championship with Turner Gill and company able to really turn around at that point the culture of losing that had sadly happened with the UB football program. And Starks just a tremendous running back. Brian, you had a, so many times to watch him. Guy was just a pleasure to watch play college football and, of course, now succeeding with the Green Bay Packers. Third down, look at that stop by the Bowling Green defense. Third down, and they tackle for loss as they get a hold of Oliver and drive him backwards. And that will likely send out the field goal unit. Into this wind you got to think twice about field goals. But Clark's leg, we've seen, has been strong over the course of these last couple of the games. And this uh, still of the shorter variety. It's under 30 yards, so I think the decision is easy here for Jeff Quinn to bring him out. We'll call it about a 28-yarder. Jacob Shum will put the spot down at the Bowling Green 18. Spot is down. Kick is up. No problem with the wind. And it is true. Patrick Clark. Still perfect for field goals this season since he has taken over from Peter Farden. And he extends the UB lead to 6. 20-14 to 14 Buffalo. 3.52 to go here in the second quarter. So Bowling Green's defense stiffens, but the Bulls get it 3 just the same. It is a really nice thing, and you can't take it for granted. We've seen it especially in the MAC overall this year. And I'm speaking for both teams, and I'm speaking just basically of UB's Division One history, Howard, of taking for granted short field goals, extra points, that they are going to be automatic. It just, especially in the MAC itself, you ask any MAC coach about special teams in terms of those extra points and those short field goals that need to be automatic. And Clark this year, and I, as a freshman here, I hate to put so much pressure on him, but boy, if he can continue to do this from what he's done in this last part of the season, as you see it split the uprights easily into a strong wind, UB's kicking future is solid because they have had so many issues. We've talked about it earlier this year, the Northern Illinois game, the fact that they could have possibly had a chance to win that. We've seen it so often during the course of uh, Turner Gill's years, Jeff Hoffer's years, Jim Hoffer's years, and there you see Pete Farden, Farden the yep. senior kicker there, who missed that key extra point against Northern. Bulls go with the low kick, almost hit a Bowling Green player, picked up just inside the Falcons' 40-yard line, so they'll get a nice drive start here. They didn't want to get that ball up in the air with the wind, and uh, Javon Leacock returns it for Bowling Green. So they'll take over down six with 3.47 to go in the second quarter. You know, I mean, and UB had it good for a long time with A.J. Principe. Yep. Pretty solid kicker. You could rely on him. You, you didn't have to worry about... 40 plus and things like that and you're right brian that's a great i don't want to say it's a luxury but it's a great thing to have if you're jeff quinn going forward three more years of a guy who's got a very strong leg i mean he hit that 49 yarder against akron last week and he hit it pretty solid from the 46 of the falcons matt schiltz the sophomore quarterback with a three receiver set play fake he wants jordan and Instead, goes over the middle to Cooper, complete. Just shy of the Bulls' 40-yard line, but a first down. Beautiful route from Cooper over on the far sidelines. Took the defensive back deep and then came across the field. UB kind of in a zone there, and that one right on the target from Schiltz. Good throw. And you mentioned Cooper's name there, too. Or, uh, or excuse me, you mentioned Jordan's name there, too. He was open over on the near sidelines. The UB defense... Had to pick their spot, and unfortunately, they picked the wrong one. Shields was right on the money. 
Well, the good news for Dave Clawson, the head coach, his quarterback's only a sophomore. The bad news is his top two weapons are seniors. In uh, Jordan and Cooper, both are graduating. From the Bulls' 41-yard line, first and 10, Cooper on the handoff, tripped up. Nice play defensively for UB as Delonte Wallace, the linebacker, got into the backfield and broke that play up. Yeah, Wallace ended up uh, really forcing Cooper off stride and allowed the rest of the pursuit. There you see it right there. Even though it doesn't make the tackle, again, it's not always the one in the stat book that makes it. Nice job there. Cooper is a guy in space that can be dangerous. Beautiful job there just to slow him up for a moment. Two-yard loss on the play as Wallace got a piece of the kneecap, it looked like. Second down and 12. Schultz. To the right side, complete for Cooper, and he goes out of bounds. He's going to mark it at the 36 of Bulls, about five yards short. These are the perfect throws with the wind behind you because if you're throwing these out routes, you can keep the ball low, you can keep it down in a way where the receiver can go and get it and the defensive back can't, but also because the throw is low and you're putting some force behind it, the wind's not going to take it. Those deep passes over the middle or the fade routes down the sidelines, those are the ones where the wind could really take off with it. Smart decisions and smart play calling right now by BG. It's a third down and five. Three receiver set. Bulls showing blitz. Well, maybe they're changing something. Means changes it. They do blitz. Schiltz under pressure. Hit on the release, and it rolls incomplete. So the Bulls got through. Khalil Mack was back there, Colby Way, and they got a hold of, got a piece of Schiltz. Schiltz was trying to hit Cooper out in the flat. Lester had it well covered. As you'll see here, right at the last moment, does not get everything on it. Mack coming in. And Schiltz luckily just get away with not much contact on that play. Going to go for it on fourth and five, and UB had to make some changes. They bring their defense back out. I like this call. A punt almost surely goes into the end zone with the wind behind you here. So you're only gaining 15 yards if you punt it. Fourth and five. Bulls showing blitz. Here they come. Quick pass to the near side. Complete. And it looks like he's short. He's got to get to the 31. I think they're at the 32. Jordan is the receiver. Bulls bench says it's their ball, and it is. Yep. And that's on Jordan. You can't run a route that needs five yards, four. And that's what he did right there. And he did have to come back for the pass a little because of the wind pushing that ball down. But you can see, even if he hit him up in the chest, he's still a yard short. He would have gotten had to have gotten by the tackle attempt of Najah Johnson. So that's on the receiver there. There's no way that they would call a four-yard out route there on that play on a fourth and five play. So the Bulls take over on their own 32. 158 to go here in the second quarter. Bulls have two timeouts left. They have a 20 to 14 lead. Anderson will start this drive out of the shotgun. Brandon Oliver to his right. It's a four receiver set for the Bulls. Oliver gets the delay. Coming up at halftime, we mentioned it's uh, senior day. One of the 20 seniors honored before the game is left tackle Matt Ostrowski. And our Dave Miller will be chatting with members of the Ostrowski family who are here to watch Matt play this final game as a member of the Bulls. What a tremendous story it is coming back from a severely broken leg last year to come back and complete play in his final season at UB. Anderson to the far side, complete to Marcus Rivers, knocked out of bounds, short of a first down. About a yard short. It was, uh, he met with the media this week, and Ostrowski was saying, as you get a good look at the senior, that uh, he didn't really, wasn't really sure this day was going to come when he was in the hospital and going through the rehab and all, all those tough days that you'd imagine you'd go through rehabbing a broken leg. And that record that Brandon Oliver set, you know, offensive linemen everywhere proud when their running back does something like what Oliver did today. Third down and one. Big play here for the Bulls to try and keep the drive going. Pass to the near sideline. Sales. That, that was not going anywhere near Devin Hughes. Kind of surprised they did that. Third down and one. You can give the ball to Oliver. Run the ball. Maybe run out the clock instead. Now you're punting into the wind and punting it back to Bowling Green. Worst case scenario, you run it and you at least make BG use a timeout. I don't like that call at all. But fourth and one there. 
especially look at the length of the throw he has to make. I know that might have not been the first read on the play, but that's not what I would consider to be high percentage stuff. Worst case, again, you don't get it, but you make BG use a timeout. And they already blocked one and almost blocked that one. Got some good pressure on Shum. Gates picks it up. Nope, did he... Uh... Open for suggestions here, Brian. Well, he signaled fair, fair catch. catch. Oh, I didn't see the signal. Okay. Usually when it hits the ground, that means all bets are off. But maybe the, the, huh. uh, the they rule in dead. college yeah. is different than it is in the, in the pros. All right, so Bowling Green takes over with 117 to go. And we'll see if that stop comes back to haunt the Bulls. Let's watch Gates. There you see him in the middle of the screen there. See if he does that double hand fair catch thing again. He did that earlier in the game. Yep, he did. I, you know Let's what? I, see, think he's gotta, doing, I think he's saying like, no, no, get away right? from the I, that, ball. That's, but he did that earlier yeah. in the game, too. And, they, and, and it was a ball on the air, though. It wasn't a ball that hit the ground. He did that earlier, and that looks more like get out of the way. I think that just might have been a, a quick whistle mistake there on the official's part. All right. Well, the ball is spotted at the Bowling Green 26-yard line. Schultz out of the shotgun. Pass is incomplete. Good coverage. Johnson. They wanted Tyler Beck on the far side. That's taking advantage of that five-yard bump rule right there. Najee Johnson up, pressing, bumping, and it's still within five yards. You can get away with that, and there's going to be no interference called. Well, we saw Lester with a pick earlier, and you just mentioned Najee Johnson. Jeff Quinn, the, the entire secondary, turned over to graduation after last season, and he said there were a lot of questions back there, but he feels good with the answers they've gotten from Courtney Lester and Najah Johnson as the starting cornerbacks going forward into the 2012 season. Second down and 10. Bulls rush three. Flag on the play. Schultz is incomplete. Flag on the far side at about the 22-yard line. And you can see, you can hear the wind. You can see leaves and debris flying around UB Stadium. Well, for everybody in attendance, just be glad it's not the traditional... 28 degrees today, like it sometimes is on <laughs> the day after it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> At least it's warm. <laughs> and the sun's out for part of the place. The Bowling Green Falcon, he's trying to hold. Look at it. He's got to hold on to his head. He's trying to. Yeah, you know what? Be careful. You flap those arms. You may go airborne today. It was offsides on Buffalo, so they moved the ball to the 31. One ten to go second quarter. Second down and five Falcons. Buffalo up 20 to 14. They blitz. Hits a wide open Eugene Cooper. And that's first down yardage for the Falcons. Uh oh, and Branch is hurt. And Fred Branch is down on the Bowling Green sideline. Uh, got up on his own power. But yeah, he's not but he's good. having trouble putting, as you can see, any weight on his left foot. That's the Bulls, one of their best defensive players right there. He's the leading tackler for the team. Maybe, I don't know, maybe he turned an ankle. We'll see if we can tell on the replay as he came over for the tackle. You can see he kind of whipped his, his he whipped he around and maybe hit, rolled into something. hurt himself by rolling into one of the BG sideline guys. So he's trying to get off on his own power there. He's going to be helped by a member of the training staff. In the meantime, Bowling Green has a first down. Clock stopping with a minute five to go. Patrick Clark's field goal started the scoring today with a 31-yarder back in the first quarter. The Bulls went up 10-0. Stephen Means with the pick six. Interception, he returned it 42 yards. After a Boo Gates, Boo Boo Gates interception for Bowling Green. Schultz hit a six-yard pass to Kamar Jordan. It was 10-7 after one. Courtney Lester's pick set up UB again. Brandon Oliver, six-yard touchdown run, 17-7 early second. A partial block of a Jacob Shum punt. Put Bowling Green on the Bulls 28. On the first play, they hit a 28-yard pass to Eugene Cooper to make it 17-14. Clark's field goal made it 20-14. to Pass knocked away. Johnson on the coverage again on the far side. Najee Johnson with another breakup. And maybe some, he's got to watch out. He's not a little doing trash talk in there. Yeah, Johnson's having a very good game. We mentioned the early breakup to uh, have the single season record, which he holds. Now definitely uh, able to hold that one in that category. Schultz rolling out. The ball maybe sails a little with the wind out of bounds, but good coverage regardless. Second down and 10 from the 38 of the Falcons. 
Bulls rush four. He gets the playoff complete over the middle of the field. Big stick there and a flag, and I assume they're going to get Copeland on that hit. Much to the chagrin of the Bulls fans, but the intended receiver made the catch shaken up at the 45-yard line. Leading with his helmet. See it on the replay here in a moment if that was the case. Nice job holding on to the ball by Sean Johnson. First Joplin. foul, defense number three. A blue go high hit, 15-yard penalty. Added to the end of the run, automatic first down. In, in quick time, in real time, it looks like just a good hit. All right, receiver isn't aware that a hit's coming. It looks like he lowered he his shoulder. Down shoulder, yeah. It didn't look like he led with his helmet. Let's see if we can get a better look of it this way. Yeah, he did clip him a little bit. I think I think the helmet clipped him. From the 30 of the Bulls, Schultz goes to the far side, incomplete. He wanted Ray Hudson. The ball was thrown behind him. Schultz knocked down on the play. No worse for the wear. He may have hit him in the helmet, but I don't know. It might have yeah. still been his shoulder that made the first contact. Okay, see, I thought on that last angle yeah. that the that part of Copeland's helmet clipped, clipped like it. underneath in the underneath, jaw area. Yeah, like a, right, exactly, yeah. the jaw, right. It, it's the way it looked on the last angle. Second and ten. I have no say in the matter anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Schultz to the near side, behind the intended receiver. Lester on the coverage as they were trying to get the ball to Jordan. So the UB secondary put to the test here. And we'll see if they can come up with a hold right before halftime. 39 seconds to go, third down and 10 coming up with the Falcons. Well, Kyle Burkhart, the kicker for BG here. Who, excuse me. Bert Hart and Steven Stein, the two kickers, their longest all year is 39. So they right now are looking at 47. So they've got to go ahead and get inside of that. Now it's a lot easier. Rollout, pass complete to Eugene Cooper. He gets Bowling Green a first down and down inside the Bulls' 15-yard line. They'll stop the clock to move the chains with 33 seconds to go. Of course, Bowling Green... Can stop it too. They've got all three uh, timeouts left. Stein is their more regular kicker. He's made one from 39. He's made eight field goals this year. His long is 39. And Kyle Burkhardt, also the backup kicker, has made one from 39. But now they are well inside of that, and they have the wind at their back. A touchdown here would tie the game at 20, pending the extra point. Schultz for the end zone, incomplete. Lester down there with Copeland as well. As they wanted their, their main gun, Kamar Jordan. There's an example of the wind just taking that ball and letting it sail into the corner. Pretty much the same spot we saw Chaz Anderson try to hit Marcus Rivers on a pass into the corner back in the first quarter. Lester is lined up against Jordan. What a tough matchup it is for Buffalo. Jordan third in the MAC in receiving and coming into the game today from just inside the 15, second and 10 movement. Bulls say that somebody jumped. False start on the Bowling Green offensive line. They're all pointing. Again, it would be the gentlemen in the striped shirts that have the final say here. The umpire jumped up right away and gave the false start signal. But now they're talking it over. Well, nobody's moving backwards yet. Richie Smith for UB did move a little. I love this. Bulls point to them. Bowling Green points to Buffalo. We'll see. So it is against Bowling Green. That'll help Buffalo a little bit. Give them five more yards distance between uh, where the ball is and, and the goal line. So second down and from the 20-yard line now, second down and 15. Right guard Dominic Fuellen ends up moving. You'll see it here. Watch the right guard. Yeah, and you see he flinched because of Smith. Smith moved, and BG could have had an argument there, but Fuellen on the right guard gets called for the false start. Bulls creeping up. They come with the blitz. Schultz has a man wide open. Cooper's got it, and touchdown Bowling Green. Now well, we saw that connection over the middle on the previous time that they were down at this end after the blocked punt. And Cooper having a big day now. It's his second touchdown of the game. Ninth of the season. 
And VG now an extra point away from maybe going into the locker room with the lead. They've trailed by 10 on two different occasions, 10-0 and 17-7. And you think back to the Bulls not able to uh, capitalize on a third and short and having to punt on the last possession. Bowling Green comes down, rips off a 79-yard touchdown drive. The previous play, stop, play review it. is under further review. The See ruling if, on the field was a completed pass for a touchdown. And the gentleman upstairs here, not too far from us, will check out the, the uh, instant replays. We'll see just to make sure if Cooper got in. Good pass protection there. Hmm. And I think you know what? His knee was down, but where, let's see if we can tell again. The knee, knee was down at the one, but where was the ball? I don't know. What can you, can you tell, Brian? Yeah. I don't, I don't see anything that's going to overturn no. it. it was and they're getting the, the same field. replays we are, too. So. Yeah, they're not going to get any sort of different see here. view. All right, let's see I'm what his knee's knee is down. I'm watching the knee is down right there. But you can't tell where the ball is because it if, looks like it's short. But if I'm going to guess from that angle, you know, I'm going to say it's short. short. Although, is there actually video conclusive evidence that shows it? See, and now he falls, and the ball is actually on the ground on the goal line. And you can see what underneath yeah. his elbow. Yeah. Right there, there's the ball right, so on the goal line. Short. But his knee has already been down, so I, I think he should be short. Sure. The ruling of the field stands. Yeah. Touchdown. It's, I, I'm not surprised that it wasn't it's overturned. Hard to tell. Yeah. I'm just kind of going along and guessing and pretending what that angle would look like right along the goal line. And we don't, there is no camera on the goal line, so that's the best angle we can give you. And I, I think the only other option is maybe they, they literally would have placed the ball right at the goal line. The yeah. nose just shy of the Are goal Are you really line. saving a touchdown here? Probably not. To have four cracks at it from the one-inch line. So the 20-yard touchdown pass to Eugene Cooper stands, and Bowling Green has tied the game at 20. I don't, not that Jeff Quinn could feel any better about it. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Stein on for the extra point to give Bowling Green their first lead. Oh, and he missed it. Oh, it went no, through. No, it went through. Yeah, the, the, he hit. All right, we've got to watch the replay. It hit the, the uprights left uprights moved. Right. Yeah, the, the goalpost moved. So uh, it, <laughs> it counts. It's not exactly the way they drew it up. But it hit the left upright. It forced the, up, the other upright to bend out a little, and then it went in. Let's take a look at the touchdown again. And you see Cooper... Was his knee down? Who knows? He gets in for the touchdown, and it looked like the, the correct call. Letting it stand was the correct call. It really was hard to tell on the replay conclusively. And again, that's it. It's got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the call, and I don't think there was indisputable video evidence. It's a best guess. So Bowling Green and the mascot happy. The Falcons have come back. And they've got the 21-20 lead. And the Bulls have just 23 seconds left in this quarter. Nice drive again, finishing the half. Nine plays, 74 yards. Howard, that was under a minute, just 54 seconds. Schiltz to Jordan, and uh, or excuse me, to Cooper. And then it gives BG their first lead of the day, 21-20. to 20. Stein on the kickoff, Steven Stein. Last time it was Colby Way catching the ball at about the 30. This one goes a lot deeper and into the end zone and out of the end zone as Javon Gill gives chase. So the Bulls have 23 seconds, two timeouts. They'll be at their 20, and they're going into the wind. See if uh, now, and also, by the way, if Jeff Quinn plays this conservatively, Bowling Green has all three timeouts left. They really wanted to make this interesting and see if they can try and get the ball back. I think BG's got to feel pretty good about themselves, Howard. Yep. Because I, if you asked me who's had the better of the half, I would give it to UB. But the mistakes that the Bulls have made, although not that many, Anderson's big interception leads to a touchdown in the next play. The block punt leads to a touchdown in the next play. So BG has clearly taken advantage of those turnovers. And now they may be walking into the locker room with the lead 21 to 20. Anderson handoff. 
And the Bulls get a first down right away. Uri on Brandon that Uri gets his first carry of this game. And they'll stop time the clocks, out. and UB calls Buffalo. timeout as well. With 17 seconds. That'll be a 30-second timeout. I think in... Uh, and if you're a proponent of running the ball to win football games, the Bulls have had the running game. BG has not. BG's winning because Matt Schultz has made some plays in the passing game. And Anderson struggled a little bit there. Fourth and one call. We could go over that third and one call, Howard, on the last UB drive. Remember, they threw that passing play right around midfield. If you run it there and you get it, BG never maybe doesn't even get the ball back. Worst case scenario at the end of the half, you're maybe kicking a field goal to try to extend your lead, even if it doesn't go in. You're at least going into the locker room up by six, possibly nine. And again, it's easy for me to say here because they didn't convert on the right. pass play. And who knows, it's not a guarantee you're going to get it either. either right, you still would have to continue it. to drive, but at least... And Bowling Green, by the way, could have started using their timeouts back then to stop the clock, but in theory, you could have taken more time off. It definitely plays out differently. You never know at that point. But Now Anderson looking at the pass. Anderson may be looking to run, chase towards the, the, the sideline and gets out of bounds. And uh, actually, he's going to lose yardage on the play. And now with nine seconds left, you wonder here, maybe if you just see some sort of draw play and you be getting into the locker room. There's no way Anderson's going to be able to reach the end zone on a 70-yard pass into the wind. In perfect conditions, that'd be a yeah, that's heck a, of a throw that's a to long begin throw with. to start with. So Murray stays in the game. And he gets the carry there. I'm just, okay, yeah, just, just checking the sideline. Brandon Oliver is standing there. He's got his helmet on at about the 34-yard line. Did BG take a timeout? The clock stopped with two seconds to go. That's, I think that was on UB because it now says zero timeouts for them. Okay. So I guess the Bulls took that one. Third and seven coming up for Buffalo again. David Miller coming up at halftime. We'll be chatting with members of the Ostrowski family here to see Matt playing in his final game as a member of the UB Bulls. We'll get you highlights and stats as well. And we'll have a feature on Kevin Smith from the UB wrestling squad. Their season is underway. So that's all coming up at halftime here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Stay tuned for that. Been a very entertaining first half of football here. Two teams playing for pride. But uh, given everything they got here today, and Bowling Green up by one on what should be here, the final play of the first half. Oliver is in the game now. Brandon Oliver is now back in the backfield with Chaz Anderson. Anderson avoids the sack. Throws it to Brandon Oliver at midfield. Oliver heads to the far sideline. Oliver at the 30, taken down at the 25-yard line, and that'll be the end of the first half. A half where the Bulls jumped out to a 10-0 lead in the first quarter and still had a 17-7 lead early second quarter, but they trailed by one. Going into the locker room, Bowling Green 21, Buffalo 20, and our halftime festivities will be coming up in... Just a moment, as Jeff Quinn will have to, uh, well, I mean, it's not like, you know, you're only down one, but there is a little bit of regrouping because you kind of felt like maybe, you know, UB was going to open this thing up. <coughs> they had the 10-point lead, excuse me. I don't know if you thought that this was going to be Akron all over again. Probably not. But they seemed in pretty good control as this game opened up. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you go into halftime and you're down one. So eliminate some of the mistakes and... Uh, Get the offense going. We'll see what Jeff Quinn has in mind for the second half, and Dave will chat with him a little bit later on. Well, one of the things I think that uh, Jeff Quinn has to take out of this half is that his team did move the football. It was just a couple of mistakes that BG capitalized on. So I'd say more of BG credit, and if UB just cuts down on the mistakes, uh, I think that uh, I think they've clearly shown that they've been the, the more consistent team actually moving the ball up and down the field. Let's check downstairs with Dave Miller. David.
David, thank you very much. 2120 Bowling Green over Buffalo. Halftime at UB Stadium on Time Warner Cable Sports Network. Some of the sights of our final game of the 2011 season for the University of Buffalo Bulls and the Bowling Green Falcons. Good day for Patrick Clark so far. Nice day for Stephen Means as he returns the interception for the touchdown, the product of Grover Cleveland High School. The sophomore QB with a nice toss to the senior receiver, Schiltz, to Jordan. And the Falcons will kick it off to start the third quarter. They have the 21-20 lead, and we'll see if the UB offense can get things going. Their passing game struggling in the first half. They will go into the wind in the third quarter. Javon Gill runs up and gets the ball at the 15-yard line, following his blockers, gets across the 30. And the Bulls will have the first possession of the third quarter. This couldn't work out much better, I think, for Jeff Quinn and the Bulls. You want to get the football back, try and reestablish the lead. However, though, in the fourth, if there is an important kick or something that comes down to the end, uh, they'll have the wind at their back. We look at the first half stats, and here's what jumps out to you. We know the total yardage fairly close. Rushing yards definitely in favor of UB, a lot of that behind Brandon and Oliver. The passing stats in favor of Bowling Green, and the turnovers, the two UB turnovers have really converted into BG points. They've scored two of their three touchdowns that way, and that's why they have the one-point lead right now. Jazz Anderson, the senior quarterback, gives off to Brandon Oliver on first and ten. Bulls start from their 33, and Oliver gets dragged backwards. And maybe they give him a yard on forward progress. Anderson in the first half, Brian, 6 of 13 passing, no touchdowns, one pick, 68 yards. Here's a guy who averages 208 passing yards a game at 68 in the first half. And really that's even more misleading than it is because 38 of those 68 came on that last garbage time dump off to Brandon Oliver. So essentially just 30 yards passing in the half, you take away that play. Give him a gain of two on first down. So second down and eight. Anderson keeps it. Trying to spin free, and he'll get a couple yards up to about the 39. And, and keep in mind, the passing numbers have probably gone down a little bit because of the injuries. Terrell Jackson, Alex Newts, the top two receivers on this team, out for the rest of the year. So it's, you know, Marcus Rivers and then, who knows, Ed Young, maybe Devin Hughes. Last week it was Fred Lee. You know, you've lost a couple of big pass threats. And right in that point, BG has two very good receivers that – their quarterback, Schultz, can count on, and that's why he's been able to make some nice plays today. Third down and five for Buffalo. They'd like to get, certainly not to go three and out on their first offensive possession of the third quarter. Oliver lined up in the backfield. Aaron Conacher in motion. They give to Oliver. Squeezes through the left side. Maintains his balance. Gets across the 45 and gets another first down. Like you see that carry, the extra effort again that we've been talking about. It's like a, a recording here over and over. He never is able to get down by that first guy. Watch him break the tackle here, scoot through the hole. Nice block by Ostrowski there to seal the opening to start with and then lunge forward. The talk and the buzz, Howard, in the press box during halftime, everybody was, why did UB throw on that third and one right before the half when Brandon Oliver is in the backfield? and. Another example there to maybe question that call. Oliver hits a wall and goes backwards. And again, that was uh, the Bulls' second to last possession of the first half, third and one. And instead of running, they tried to pass. Chaz Anderson threw a little uh, sideline pass, and uh, it was incomplete. They punted the ball away, and BG ripped off. Of course, you know, your defense still has to try and stop them, too. And they ripped off the 74 yard touchdown drive. But, you know, at least you could have. In theory, if you get one yard on Brandon Oliver, held on the ball a little bit longer, maybe taking some more time up the clock, maybe finished off the first half of the score. Who knows? Second down and 11. 
That's the kind of pass they tried at the end of the first half, and it didn't work, and it doesn't work here to Fred Lee. It's a tough pass to make. Far side of the field, the out route with the wind, that's a difficult throw today. Even if Lee makes that catch, I mean, I can't see him picking up more than maybe a yard or two. The defensive back's right in there closing in on it. It's just James Anderson just can't make that decision. The throws have to go somewhere else, and uh, it, I'm sure that Lee is just a check down route, and he's probably just going through his progressions there, but... but Got to maybe try and see if he can go with the football somewhere else. Third down and 11. Now, the Bulls have been good on third down. Six of 11 today, which is very, very good. But this is third and rather long. Anderson, quarterback draw. Rivers with a block on the up. You can't finish up the block. I don't know that would have gotten that far anyway. So Anderson is stopped, and the Bulls will have to punt. So the Bowling Green defense does their job to start the third quarter. And the Falcons, who, as we said, uh, many you could say got to be feeling good about the fact that they have the lead. Now got a chance to see if they can pile on. Yubi's going to have to punt into the wind. They should get pretty decent field position coming back out here for their first crack at it on offense. Jacob Shum, one of the 20 seniors playing his final game for UB today, had two punts, averaged 33 yards in the first half. Low snap, a little rugby punt. They blocked one of the two. Got a partial block on it. This one hits. Takes a little bit of a UB bounce. It's gathered up at the 20-yard line. And uh, Matt Schiltz and the Bowling Green Falcons will get their first possession of the quarter with a one-point lead. On time for the table. Let's take a look at our game changer today. It is the sophomore running back. Brandon Oliver. Well, he, he changed the record book. We know that. He bumped James Starks out of the top spot. Single season rushing record. He's got 1,358 yards on the season. And that includes the 90 yards rushing today. And he's also 15 yards away from moving up in the total yards, all-purpose yards, single season record. But Oliver and the Bulls offense need the defense to come up with a stop here. Bowling Green with a one-point lead. And the wind at their back as they start this possession in their first of the third quarter from their own 20-yard line. That sophomore quarterback, Matt Schiltz, running the Falcons' offense. And they'll run the ball on first down. Jamel Martin stopped. If you joined us a little bit late, big injury problems for Bowling Green on offense. They're down their starting running back, Anton Samuel, fifth leading rusher in the MAC, not playing today. Jordan Hopgood, one of their other running backs, he's out. So it's their second string running back, Jamel Martin, and their fourth string back, Eric Geiger, who was out on a, in a limited basis, is out there now. They had to reconfigure their offensive line because their starting left tackle is out. So they've had some issues on offense today, but have persevered with the 21 first half points. Second down and 10. The sophomore back to pass. Ball comes out of his hands and should be incomplete. As he wanted the throw, but uh, maybe he had second thoughts, and uh, it slipped right out. Officials have to be quick there to rule that incomplete. Everybody was kind of standing around, both players on both sides, <laughs> saying, hey, is, is that, that live ball? or yeah. is that incomplete? Uh, the forward motion is what clearly will show that this is going to be a pass. He just tried to do that old tuck roll thing where he tried to pull it back, and it came out, and... Uh, that will be an incompletion every time. But the officials waited probably a good two to three seconds before they actually motioned that it was incomplete. Schultz, 11 of 24 today, 135 yards passing, three TDs, but two interceptions. One, Stephen Means, returned for a touchdown. Third and 10. Bulls rush four. The ball's batted at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if Colby Way, I'm not sure who was there, but it's one of the Bulls. Yeah, I think it was Way. Richie Smith or Colby Way got a piece of that. I think Way was the one that got the piece of it there, and he was trying to hit the far out route. It was pretty well covered over there by Lester. Mack actually limping off for UB2. We'll keep an eye on that, but a good job by the Bulls defensively forcing the three and out. Let's see if we can see if it was Way or if it was it. It was made of well, it means. It means, yeah. yeah it was I means think it was means, it. yeah. All right. So Akoya Houston back to receive the punt from Brian Schmidtebush. He punted three times, averaged 37 yards in the first half of action. Second leading punter in the MAC this season. So the Bulls respond, and they get a three and out. Get some uh, rush there. Copeland with a little pressure. Houston backs out of the way, and it's going to take a big, wow. huge bowling green bounce. Inside the 10, still rolling. To the 5. <laughs> and down... <laughs> the Bowling Green players are trying to wave it on a little bit. 
down to the four. So UB's offense back up. Their worst drive start of the day. We'll see what the Bulls do when we get back on time. Each week, the uh, UB coaching staff gives out these hard hats to players who've graded out and, and earned the honor. Various players have won the hard hat. They can have multiple winners. That's the guy, the only guy, who's won it every week. Sophomore running back Brandon Oliver. And he wears the hard hat on road trips because he wants to, he says, I use it to remind myself the amount of work it takes the preparation, and he wants that always to remind him how to work hard each week. He is trapped deep in the backfield. It's not a safety, but uh, the Bulls were at the four, and now they're a little closer to their own goal line. That play was not going to grade out very well <laughs> when they go back and figure it out. But, uh, boy, that, that hole was swallowed up in a, hurly, the, or in a hurry. The BG front four doing a wonderful job on that play to seal it up, and now you has got to be careful. Yeah, Anderson has they not are, thrown the ball well, yep. Brian, and you're backed up at your own two now. Remember, any penalty at this point, too, on the offensive line, a holding call, you can get yourself in trouble, too, with a safety. Oliver gets him back to about the original, a little bit beyond the original line of scrimmage. That'll be third down and long. So backed up in their own end, and if they have to, if they have to punt, if they can't convert here, you're punting out of the back of your end zone into the 20-ish mile-an-hour winds here at UB Stadium. The BG punt right before we went to break, we mentioned it was a good one. 76 yards was the, the length of the punt, and that's why you'd think after UB had stopped BG and they had to punt from their own 20, they'd get good field position, and now look at they're inside their own, in the inside their own 10. Not the longest punt for Schmidtebusch this season. He had an 81-yarder earlier this season. Third down, Anderson gives to Oliver. He has swallowed up, and they lost yardage again. So BG kind of figuring they're going to run the ball three times at us, and they were able to stop what was coming. And now, tough job for Jacob Shum. He's going to punt out of the back of his end zone. And that hurts because normally you want 15 yards separation from the line of scrimmage to the punter. He'll have less than that. And all the 15-yard distances have been very close in terms of getting blocked. So don't be surprised if BG comes hard here. And that punt at the 40-yard line. It's a pretty good punt into that wind, nice up, nice and high. We'll take a break. Good drive start for... Drive start for Bowling Green. Uh, they have a 21-20... Lead and congratulations, by the way, to Letchworth. State champions. Letchworth won their game in Class D. The first ever state championship for the Letchworth Indians football program. Congratulations again. We'll have all the highlights coming up Tuesday night at 7 on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Talking to some high school coaches this week, Howard, and uh, I'm, sh you know, I'm sure you addressed it on your show, but uh, Aquinas losing still is stunning a lot of these high school coaches. They said that... That's the best high school football team that they said that they've seen in a long time. And the and the main ed while able to take them down, that's a big win for that program. Four-yard uh, gain on first down, second down and six for Schiltz in the offense. Yeah, I, I watched a good chunk of that game, and I was stunned that main ed well won that football game. Pass is incomplete. Flag flies from the far sideline. Main end well is leading their game. 7 nothing. the team Brian was just talking about that took down Aquinas in Class A. Yeah, he was watching that game and just going, hey, well, they're good for Maine and well, they're hanging with them. And I was like, well, it's just a matter of time until Aquinas opens this thing up and blows them out, and it, it never happened. Sean Smith, our ref. Defense, eyeline interference. Five-yard penalty. The down counts, third down. We saw Jeff Quinn almost as if, like, who? I don't know who, like have his one arm out go, huh? I was going to say, the flag was thrown over where the, where the pass was, yeah, but was I didn't see there, any yeah. interference at all. Hmm. So players or staff on the UB personnel on the sideline there must have been enough in the area of play. We're going to check a replay about that. Top of the screen, all, got, yep, one of the assistant coaches on the sideline, the referee, the official bumped into him. Yep. 
So you got to be off, off the white and back behind. So the Bulls get flagged for it. And uh, they, the down counts, so it's third down, but it's third down and two. Now you can bring the run in. Third and seven, it's probably only pass. Shields turns, gets the signals from the sideline. Dave Clawson, the head coach. Warren Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator. Designing the offense for the Bowling Green Falcons. On third and two. And they'll try and run the stretch play. First down yardage and more to the far side of the field. As the Bowling Green continues the drive. BG sidelines fired up. They're feeling like the momentum is definitely in their favor right now. And that penalty is big, Howard, because the play call definitely is different if it's third and seven. Instead, third and two, they go ahead. As there is a, a UB player down over on the far sidelines. Tough to see the number, but uh, this running play, we said, is opened up. They have that option to run on a third and two, and he's able to get around the end, get around means, and see at the end of the play here. We can see maybe who ends up getting banged up. There's three Bulls down there. Copeland, number three. Maybe, maybe Josh Copeland, we'll see. Uh, John Pettigrew, by the way, with his first carry of the game. Uh, we'll see. As the training staff attends to the injured player. And Bowling Green has a good drive going. They punted on their first possession, but now moving the football. Field, winning the field position battle. Dave Clawson's team. Dave Clawson in his third year at Bowling Green. Boy, what a job he did at his previous two stops. We mentioned earlier, native of Youngstown, New York, former assistant coach at UB. Turned around the programs at Fordham and Richmond. Won national coach of the year honors. It is Copeland. Both stops. And he's there up. you see Josh Copeland walking off on his own power. Won national coach of the year honors. Took the Richmond Spiders to the National semifinals in one double A one year. You see Copeland coming in on that tackle. And look at his right leg Oof, kind of twisted. Bent. Yeah, he got twisted underneath there. And then probably rolled on too. It looks like he got three or four on. bodies yep. falling on his lower half there. First down and ten for the Falcons now inside the red zone at the Bulls sixteen yard line. Approaching. The halfway point of the third quarter, Bowling Green and Buffalo right where they were at halftime. Falcons with the one-point lead, 21-20. Schiltz keeps it himself. Schiltz gets down, first down yardage, down near the five-yard line. Maybe caught the Bulls by surprise. That's his, Schiltz running the ball. That's his first carry. The running game's been very successful, so that sets that play action up. Here you see the fake handoff and then right up the middle. It was heavy pursuit by the UB front four there in on that handoff. It would have been stopped, but I don't know if that's, I don't know, maybe on Schiltz, maybe he has the green light on any play to go ahead and keep it. If so, that was a very smart decision. Now first and goal coming up. And a four receiver formation. Handoff and a big tackle for loss by Khalil Mack as he got in and stopped Pettigrew. Well, Mac, we know if you've followed UB all season long, has been one of their highlight reel makers and another one right there. Time where the UB defense needs to step up and try and force a field goal attempt. Yeah, he had a big game last week against Akron. It had, he'd gone quiet, relatively speaking, for Mac's status because a lot of teams know he's the key player on that defense, but he had a huge game against Akron, very disruptive. And a big play there. Brian, you're right. If they can hold him to a field goal, that would be big. Schiltz with time. Throws complete. And it is the tight end trying to fight his way to the end zone. He gets down to the 3-2 yard line maybe. Good job by the Bulls to keep that play from going into the end zone. That's uh, Alex Bear who comes out of the pack. Good coverage, uh, I want to say, down uh, in the bottom of the field area by Najah Johnson, who was guarding Kamar Jordan on that play. Remember how the first touchdown, they threw that little corner out right where uh, Jordan used his size. We'll see maybe if they go back that way here. Corey, Houston did a nice job from his safety spot. First guy in there to keep Bear from going into the end zone. They've got that one-on-one -on -one matchup down on the bottom of the field, Jordan and Johnson. Double tight ends. 
They'll run the ball and get into the end zone for the touchdown. So Bowling Green capitalizes on the short field, and the Falcons extend their lead to 27-20. Well, definitely this uh, surge from BG late first half, now early second half, has their sidelines excited and believing that they can finish their final game of this regular season with a victory. And a lot of contributors getting it done. Well, we said they're banged up with their running game, and uh, that was John Pettigrew's first action in the running game all afternoon, and he gets the touchdown. The junior from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, extends the lead to seven. Steven Stein trying to make it eight. Bayer puts the snap down. Kick is up, and it is good. Bowling Green has their largest lead of the day, 28-20 to 20 with 6.05 to go here in the third quarter at UB Stadium after the touchdown run by John Pettigrew. And you can't even keep the souvenir. All right, here's the replay. Just a simple dive handoff right out of the shotgun. And in he goes for the score. Nice hole, beautiful block by the offensive line there and Bowling Green and Dominic Wharton, number 78 there. You saw really create the seal on the right side. And he got the start today because of injuries. He's the backup left guard, but he was pressed into starting action today because their left tackle, Kyle Bryant, is out with an injury. And they had to shift around the line a little bit. So Wharton filling in nicely up front for Dave Clausen's crew. Steven Stein's going to put the ball on the tee, and Bowling Green is now up eight. And, and you know, Brian, you could just kind of sense the momentum swing in the second quarter. And this is a carryover, over, a carryover from where the game was going at the tail end of the first half. And UB really needs – there's no spark out there for them. And I thought maybe max play would have been something – but now they really need the offense to bring some life back. To the second team. quarter, Lester gets a big interception for UV. Oliver caps it. They go back up by 10. And then the defense forces a three and out. But after that, Howard, the big block punt, as we see Murray here on the return. Brandon Murray on the return. The big block punt for BG. Yep. Next play, they score to Cooper. Then, right before the half, they score again to Cooper. And now the Pettigrew TD. So uh, they've been able to get themselves three touchdowns in the course of their last four possessions, doing a nice job there. But, yeah, that block punt gave them great field position, and they've gone from here. Good return for Brandon Murray, who's done a really nice job returning kicks for the Bulls. Big kick return last week, 93 yards against Akron. Gets him out just shy of the 30 at the 29-yard line here. And Chaz Anderson playing his final game as a Bull, hoping to go out on a winning note before handing the reins over to who knows next season. Maybe Joe Licata, we're not quite sure. Anderson from the 29. Tries to get the screen out to Brandon Oliver, and it is broken up. Tipped at the line of scrimmage by Kevin Moore, the defensive end for Bowling Green. It's just well defended. The Falcons are there. And, I mean, it, they have obviously at halftime said, we are not going to let Brandon Oliver beat us. Somebody else is going to have to do it. We know the couple of handoffs that Oliver had. He was stuffed immediately, and even out of the backfield, the weapon that he is, it was at least three or four white jerseys right around Oliver they're trying to set up that screen play second down and ten Ed Young in motion four receivers set for the Bulls here look like Bowling Green might have jumped guess not Anderson keeps it and he'll get up across the 30 to the 32 it's going to bring up a third down on about seven yeah it just looks like there's just no spark there's uh, a UB offense that just doesn't seem to be able to make some big plays here check the Bowling Green defense thought maybe one of the tackles had jumped. Be the second man on uh, our view there. Yeah. I thought you got a little head start. They'll mark it at the, again, the 32. So it is third down and seven. Bunch formation to the left. Oliver has it. Gets through the hole, and there goes Brandon Oliver, flag on the play. Oliver's gone for the touchdown. There's a flag at the Bulls' 34-yard line. And the guy who usually throws that calls holding. It's a 68-yard TD if it stands, but that flag is back right in the area of holding. And it may, unfortunately, tame the excitement for UB and their fans here. And goodbye, touchdown. We play third down. Holding on the Bulls. We'll see if we can catch it. 
that flag flew as he was getting through the crowd, and you you know before you you knew that nobody was going to catch him, the flag was on the ground. So Brandon Oliver wipe out the big touchdown run. Right maybe there, 56. maybe fifty six, maybe spun him around. Carlson, yeah, we're we're guessing here because we didn't hear the referee's number, but let's see. 56, right, right there. Right there, 56, yep. right there. I, th- I think it's Carlson. Yep. <laughs> you could have maybe called that on a couple guys, but I think Carlson spun a guy around in the hole where Oliver was shooting through. I think you're yep. right, Brian. So uh, we're, we're guessing, but perhaps on the sophomore from Jamestown and Southwestern High School, Jason Carlson. So you wipe out the touchdown, and you want mark off the penalty, so now it's third down and 17, and you're back. Down at your 22-yard line. Javon Gill into the backfield now. Anderson under pressure. Ball's tipped and almost almost intercepted. intercepted. Anderson right now does just not seem comfortable in the pocket, Howard. No. They're trying to set up screens. It's not there. I know throwing into the wind is not easy, so you are necessarily handcuffed a little in terms of what kind of routes you can run and passes you can throw. But he just he drops back, and he's not even pressured. You can see he's moving out of the pocket already here. Look at this. He's backing up, backing up, backing up. There's no pressure. He can stay in there. Jacob Shum's punt hit the wind and went sideways once it got past the 30-yard line. So it rolls out of bounds. And, boy, the Falcons with all the momentum, the eight-point lead. And now they're going to start at around the Bulls' 36-yard line with 4.53 to go here in the uh, third quarter. You know, just to further the point on Anderson, I, I, I he, he hasn't gotten into a rhythm at all today. Remember, he missed his first four passes, and he I just don't think he's at, – at any point today, Brian, has he looked comfortable back there throwing the football? No, even the passes that have been completed. Remember, it's been a couple of dumped off to Oliver. Uh, the one pass out on the flat to Alex Dennison only went for a yard. Yeah, it has not been a good passing day for Anderson. And – the, the wind excuse, you can't use it because Schiltz on the other yep. end has found ways to make throws. So John Pettigrew gets the carry, and he's dragged down from behind by Khalil Mack. I mean, there's definitely plays that you can't run when it's this windy when you're going into the wind, and that's fine, but he just does not look like he is comfortable standing in the pocket right now. Well, like you said, Schiltz has thrown three touchdown passes today. Now he's had a couple picks. But he's made some big plays in the past game for Bowling Green today, and it it works both ways. The wind affects both teams, obviously. Give him a yard loss, so a tackle for loss for Khalil Mack, who leads the Mack in that statistical category, just added to that total. Pettigrew goes out of the backfield in motion on second and 11. Bulls rush four. Pump fake. Schiltz. Throws it over the head out of bounds for Kamar Jordan. Just maybe getting rid of it there. Good coverage by Nadja Johnson on Jordan. And that's going to bring up third down and long for Bowling Green. Well, the fans here at UB Stadium were looking for a hold on that play when Shills was about to be sacked, and then one of the BG linemen actually sat on top of one of the Bulls. But if you've actually done that, they usually they'll rarely call holding on that. If you kind of basically be on top of the guy you've been blocking here. Look in the middle right there. And then he's trying to get up the whole time. I know it's out of the picture, but that's what the UB fans here were kind of going crazy over. As Gordon Dubois, who was down and trying to get it up. Third down and 11 again. Uh, needless to say, the Bulls need a big play here. They send the blitz. Pass is complete. First down yardage. Sean Dunlop trying to make more out of that. Dunlop inside the 15, down inside the 10. First and goal for Falcons. When they've needed a big play from Schiltz, He's really come through. That is a nice throw. When you see this replay, the pressure that he gets up the middle, he stands in there. He knows he's going to get hit. The pressure comes up the middle. And then the uh, nice and then missed tackles. tackle. Yeah. Courtney Lester at the, at the last one there. Has to pump. See, he knew that he was going to get hit. Stood in there, though, enough to be able to complete it on the money. Nice job by Schiltz. And now another first and goal coming up for BG. Trying to get themselves their biggest lead of this game. Yeah, he's shown some really good poise today, Brian. And, again, he's only a sophomore, but he got a lot, a lot of playing experience last year. Got 10 starts. They give to Pettigrew from the 7. 
Off the right side he goes to get him inside the five. And remember the story on Schiltz. He, he, he was being recruited by Kansas State, a Big 12 program, and they fired that entire coaching staff. The guy who recruited him to come to Kansas State comes to Bowling Green, their offensive coordinator, Warren Ruggiero, and he brings Schultz with him to Bowling Green. So this is the guy who was headed to play in the Big 12. And his arm strength definitely showing that he's a uh, BCS Conference caliber quarterback. And that's the best news. If you're a BG fan watching this today, you got to be excited to know that you got this guy for another two years under center. Schultz throws for the corner of the end zone. It is incomplete. Good coverage by Copeland over there, trying wanted, to hit Jordan. Yep, wanted Kamar Jordan, their leading receiver, who's going to go down, has already gone down. The Bowling Green record books. Only man to ever have 2,000-yard seasons as a receiver in the history of Bowling Green football. You get a good look at Kamar Jordan. Some pro scouts have been watching him this season. And Brian, you mentioned his size earlier. He's got good size, 6'1", 205, not bad. Could, a couple more inches wouldn't hurt. Right. It's good enough, though, that if, if an NFL scout likes you, that it, they're not going to inhibit you from being drafted or being signed as a free agent. Third down and goal from the Bulls, three. Schultz, ball batted around, flag on the play. Intercepted by the Bulls, but there's a flag, two flags on the play. And we'll see what happens here. If it stands, the Bulls make the pick. If not... This is a much-needed turnover by UB if they can get it. For their and, uh, sake, they obviously hope that another Naja Johnson doesn't, doesn't look them. doesn't look happy. He kind of threw his arms up in the air and uh, pass interference. Defense number forty-four. So Spout. that's Curd at the one-yard line. The ball placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first. That's on Jaleel Verser, the junior linebacker. So instead of having the ball at their own twenty and stopping the drive and keeping it a one possession game it will be first and goal now verster is the guy they called it on right there who, who knocked down alex bear bear wanted the flag and he got the flag bear ran kind of an out route and then cut it back in on a slant the timing route was there but looked like verster made a nice play could have maybe had his arm wrapped around the back side of him give to pettigrew and the Bulls stop him at the one. That's a tough call right there. That's an aggressive play. You're trying to go break it up. Doesn't look like there's a lot of body-to-body -body contact. The only thing I can think of is maybe he's got his arm around the back of him and the, and the back judge sees that. At least on that judge, or on that look of it from our angle there, looked as though he came around the front and did a nice job to tip it up in the air. That's a big play. BG could go up two scores here. Instead, UB gets the ball back, feeling good about a stop. Timeout is called. It'll be second down and goal. We have an injured UB player. That's Isaac Baugh down there on one uh, on one knee. While the UB trainers attend to him, we'll remind you about the football wrap that you can catch on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet with Rich Gensler. That's the way you prepare for each Bills game every weekend as Baugh gets up. Rich Gensler's with you Friday nights at 6.30. Sunday mornings at 11.30 as well. The latest on the Bills, inside information, interviews, special guests, and much more. That's the Football Wrap with Rich Gensler. Again, it will be on uh, oh, today, Friday. I lost total today track of Friday, it. Yeah. <laughs> that, that Thursday holiday messes you up. So that's tonight at 6.30 and again Sunday morning uh, before football action at 11.30 on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. The man that he's interviewing there in that clip, Fred Jackson, what a blow. That they lose him, an MVP candidate in my eyes. And now it's C.J. Spiller's turn. All the uh, doubt of whether or not he was worth that draft pick. Well, he can maybe prove himself that he was worthy of it here over the course of the rest of the season. That'll be interesting to follow. Just when you thought it couldn't get more depressing for the Bills, yeah. Fred Jackson goes on IR. Second down and goal, Jamel Martin now in the backfield in the eye. Martin has it, moves to the outside, steps in, touchdown, Bowling Green. So two key penalties hurting the Bulls. Brandon Oliver's touchdown run on the last possession wiped out. The interception on this possession wiped out. And instead, Bowling Green now is up 14, 34 to 20. Four touchdowns on their last six possessions for BG. It's been quite a swing since that block punt 
And since that block punt, four TDs for BG and six possessions, and now they go up double digits, trying to make it a 15-point lead here with this extra point to come. The hole's not there in the middle, but Martin just bounces it outside and easy walk in from there, untouched. Steven Stein on for the extra point for the Falcons. And he'll make it a 15-point game, 35-20 bowling green with 147 to go here in the third quarter. You can't keep the football anyway, kids. I'm pretty sure that uh, they're going to try and have you give it back. So let's take a look once again. And, Brian, you made the point. Nice cut to the outside. A lot of bodies in there. And then he steps in over the offensive lineman and gets into the end zone. Jamel Martin with the touchdown, the second TD of the quarter. Yeah, this was, remember, early second quarter, the Bulls were up 17-7 to when Brandon Oliver got a six-yard run. And, well, since then, it's all Bowling Green. 28-3 to is the run the Bowling Green Falcons are on right now. Completely changing things around here at UB Stadium. And the mood of senior day and early on UB, it looked as though maybe they were going to blow uh, the Falcons out, Howard. It really did. They get the early field goal, then Means has the interception for a touchdown. Still, after BG got on the board, Brandon Oliver gave UB back the 10-point lead on a TD run, but since then, boy, it's been all BG. And give the Falcons credit for not folding the tent, you know? And, and they could have. They've come in on this losing streak now. Yep. They're not feeling good about the way this season's going. They obviously have a ton of injuries. We've been mentioning that, and they've been able to come through. Murray at the goal line. Hit hard at the 20. You could hear it up here. Oh, look at the Falcon sideline. They are fired up. Man. This is why the Mac is so weird. I mean, how not only within games, how you never know what's going to happen, but you look at what Bowling Green's done. They've lost six of the last seven. All these injuries... You would have thought, Howard, like you said, UB gets up on them 10 nothing early. They're just going to mail it in. The season's mm -hmm. over. Yep. Instead, they fought back after losing a heartbreaker last week. Somehow, in between a six-game losing streak, they beat Temple, a yeah, team that we'll absolutely that. murders UB. Right. UB should have won both games against the two division leaders. They beat Ohio. They should have, or they could have beaten Northern Illinois. I mean, it is a strange conference. It's tough to predict anything. I'll top you on that. Throw to Rivers over his head and out of bounds, incomplete. I'll top you on that. Their offense had got had gone into a funk. If you look at some of these scores, they they uh, last week they scored 28 against Ohio. Every other game they've been 21 or under in this stretch. Where, as you've said, they lost six of seven. The left tackle's out. The center goes to left tackle, and he's the best player on the offensive line. But he goes to left tackle. The left guard moves to center. They put the backup left guard in at left guard. The, the first and third string running backs are out, and they still put 35 points up. Yep. Brandon Oliver trying to get the Bulls offense going will approach the first down, be a yard or two short. Well, at some point, Chase Anderson's going to have to make throws. They yep. may wait till they switch ends for the quarter here and get the wind in their back with – uh, a minute and a half or so to go here, but uh, at some point they're going to need it. Anderson, with uh, by the way, his previous drive on his last completion, he moved into fourth all time in terms of completions in a season. Under pressure here, arm might have been hit as he threw that one, and it kind of wobbled out, incomplete into the Falcons' sideline. Now we're getting some uh, interesting. Uh, sounds from the UB crowd down below <laughs> and those aren't favorable for Chaz Anderson <laughs> yeah. I know I didn't describe him the best but uh, you can get my, get my picture here <laughs> so the Bulls they weren't the most supportive let's just say that <laughs> <laughs> Bulls turn the ball over here they'll punt it after a three and out and their offense just uh, has gone completely flat jumps punt this high spiraling kick. Boo Boo Gates walking over there, and he's going to get out of the way. And the Bulls will touch it down at the Falcons' 36-yard line with 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Senior day attendance, 12,262. Uh, the Bulls today, 20 players were introduced in pregame playing their final game or dressing for their final game here today. 
at UB Stadium. And right. obviously the same for BG. And we see a decent uh, Falcon contingent of crowd here as well. We were talking about the offense, okay? The Bulls took that 17-7 lead a little over a minute into the second quarter on Oliver's six-yard run. Since then, these are the Bulls' offensive possessions and how they ended up. Punt, field goal, punt, 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 and punt. So not much to talk of. Uh, that Patrick Clark field goal, that's it. Outside of that, the offense has pretty much gone into a deep freeze. Schiltz on first down on the rollout. has got a man down there. It's Jordan, and he's got it, and Jordan's headed for a touchdown. 64-yard touchdown throw, catch, and run for Kamar Jordan, and it's 41-20 Bowling Green. What an unbelievable, unbelievable throw in these conditions. Absolutely perfect strike from Schiltz to Jordan, his number one target. And we've seen out Howard, remember the other times that BG got a turnover from UB? They said, we want to step on their throat. They said, let's try it here again. UB is almost down and out. Let's try and knock them out right here. Boy, first play, they go for the jugular and they get it. What a perfect throw from Schiltz. The wind at his back definitely helps. Yep. Final minute of the quarter, might as well try it, right? Absolutely. You know, you know that probably your passing game is going to definitely be inhibited coming up in the next minute after you change ends. Why not take a shot? You've got the momentum on your side. UV is feeling down about themselves. It was very good coverage. Yeah. It was just an absolutely perfect throw. And BG has such a bright future with this guy, a quarterback, today. I'm really impressed from what I've seen from him. With the wind, against the wind, he's been very good today. I hope the guy on the other end of that phone was saying, nice throw. Good play fake to start it. I mean, it's decent Perfect coverage spot. from Johnson. Yeah, he gets a yeah. hand in there. I mean, obviously, you know, I wouldn't say it was perfect, but no. it's decent coverage for a throw of that length. He's rolling, rolling against his body. Yep. Comes back. Nice spiral. Yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful throw right there. Well, I remember on Tuesday at Media Day, Jeff Quinn was talking about Schultz and said that he throws a nice tight football and he can really do a good job of throwing it into a tight window. Now, there were probably tighter windows than that, but, but he put it in the right, perfect spot. And the tighter football you can throw, the better that goes through the wind. It kind of breaks through it. So, yeah, it's been, that's, I think, maybe been the number one storyline of this game today for Bowling Green. Their quarterback really solidifying the fact that, yeah, we have the right guy for the next couple of years for us to lead our team. Yeah, bad news, Mac fans. He's only a sophomore. Murray with the kickoff at the 7. Hit. Gets a couple more yards after that. There, I mean, and, and it's a day where, you know, Brandon Oliver's run the ball well, certainly not like Akron well, 235 yards, but, you know, the one big running play that they had was wiped out by a touchdown. I and mean, you're going to run the ball, and it's going to take you some time to get downfield. And they turn around and hit, boom, big pass play. They had a 64-yarder. They had a 28-yarder. A couple of one-play touchdown drives, and they're just making big plays. Five touchdowns in their last seven possessions. We mentioned the two big receivers in our pregame open, Jordan and Cooper. Would the UB secondary have trouble with them today? Well, there's four touchdowns combined between those two receivers. UB didn't have a running back on the field. So Javon Gill trots on the field. They still have 10 seconds left on the play clock as they set their offense again. Shills with just 14 completions, 236 yards, four touchdown passes. And Gill loses yardage, couple yards, one or two, on the first down play. That, uh, should be the last play of the third quarter, and the Bulls, I'm sure, will be in no rush to go into the wind on second down. They will need a heck of a rally in the third quarter. This was a one-point game at halftime, 21-20. Three third-quarter touchdowns for the Bowling Green Falcons. Needs to say their offensive struggles have ended here today. Howard, here's a telling stat. BG... Scored 21 points in that quarter. UB had one first down hmm. in that quarter. That tells the dominating story in that third quarter. Hear somebody on the Bowling Green sideline yell, finish it. Well, we'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. UB in a big hole. Fourth quarter on the way. Time Warner Cable Sports now.
fourth quarter coming up here at UB Stadium, and we look at BG, what, who knows, may be the icing on the cake of this one here today. They go up by 22 on this play. Beautiful throw from Matt Schills. He's had an outstanding day. His numbers continue to impress as he's done it on a tough day to throw the football. 14 of 31, 236 yards, and those four touchdowns. Quite a response after those two early interceptions. He and the Falcons have stormed back to stun everybody here on Senior Day at UB Stadium and now have a commanding 22-point lead. Conversely, Chaz Anderson was 0 for 5 passing in that quarter into the win and is 6 of 18 for the game. Passing here, high and caught. Nice leaping grab for the Bulls on the far side. Should be enough for a first down for Marcus Rivers, the Lackawanna High School product, playing his final game as a UB Bull. Anderson now 7 of 19, one interception. He had 68 yards passing, so that'll get him up around 80 or so. And one interception and no touchdowns. We mentioned the two big receivers, Cooper and Jordan, combined nine catches, 164 yards, and four touchdowns. Those two definitely have been a big, big part of this BG win, or on their way to their win today. Bulls really pretty much need to score on this possession. They go long, and the receiver yep. grabbed. There'll be a flag. Ed Young was grabbed on the play. Defensively there for Bowling Green, Cameron Truss, you could see him grab his arm, so the Bulls get a break there, and uh, we'll keep this drive headed into uh, Bowling Green territory. And they have few Pass interference, defense number eight. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. If UB is going to try and surmount some big comeback here, they're going to need big plays and in a hurry, and that's one way to get it, get yourself an interference call. Although in college, it's not as penalizing as it would be in the pros where they would have the ball right down there near the 20. And it's just a 15-yard penalty. They need a touchdown on this drive. Really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no question. I, totally I mean, they're down 22. The offense hasn't scored since early second quarter. They, they have to get into the end and zone here. And they're not feeling good about themselves right now with the right. way this game is going. Yeah, their, their confidence offensively has got to be pretty low. First down from the Bowling Green, 48. Anderson under pressure, and he's going to be sacked. And lose a whole bunch of real estate in the process. Lucky to even be able to hold on to the football there. The two BG pursuers tried to strip it. Anderson did everything he could to hold on to it. Kevin Moore, the defensive end, getting in for the sack. Senior playing his final game at Bowling Green. Anderson still yet to complete a pass in this half. He struggled today. You can see there he's doing all he can to just make sure he holds on to the football. Chris Jones got in two, number 91. Jones is the leading sack man in the Mid-American Conference. And yeah, Jones came in with eight and uh, now has nine. So the ball back at the Bulls, 39. Oliver in motion into the backfield. And that pass is incomplete. Oliver hit hard and as he, he was trying to get the pass. And you can see even right there, we know Anderson mentally is just not there. I've, his footwork, he's bouncing back as he makes this throw. There's no need to here. Make sure you complete this pass here. Watch as Anderson drops back. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Yeah, never got the pursuit yep. is still a few yards away there. Make sure you make the completion to your running back who can make a play for you there. And that's a sign right now that the confidence is shaken the fact that he's just not sure of himself. You can, it's that happy feet mentality. Third down and 23. And happy in the negative way, Howard. Yeah, no, I know. No, <laughs> I knew you knew that. <laughs> you're right. He, he just he hasn't he hasn't looked confident at all today. No question, Brian. Has good good replay by our guys in the truck to show you the feet. Blitz on third and 23. He rolls out to get away from Moore under pressure. Throws downfield out of bounds. So the Bulls got into Bowling Green territory, and uh, there really hasn't been much to talk about for UB offensively as they're the – is it the Druthers continue? I don't, no, I wouldn't. Eh, it's just a bad day offensively. See good pressure again, forcing Anderson. A lot of times he's been forced out of the pocket today, and he's on the run, and there's really no place to, to try and make that play. I don't think they would have. wouldn't have been completed for a first down either, by the way. Jacob Shum on to punt. He's been a busy man today. Too much for Jeff Quinn's liking, I'm sure. It's a nice roll here, but nope, it's going to roll too much, actually, into the end zone. So Bowling Green will take over at their own 20-yard line with 13.27 to go. 61 yards on jump on his senior day. Bowling Green in control in the fourth. And time for Water Cable Sports.
Bowling Green with a 42 to 20 lead over the University of Buffalo Bulls here at UB Stadium. It is Thanksgiving weekend, a very festive time of year, and it's also senior day for the UB Bulls. And you ask, well, you know, players and coaches on both sides ask the question, is it difficult to prepare your team and keep them focused during the holidays? Well, the UB Bulls got their entire team together, players, coaches, even family members of the players. They had a nice Thanksgiving sit-down dinner over at the Ramada here in Amherst. On the flip side, Bowling Green had to travel in. It's about a five-and-a-half-hour bus ride. They came in yesterday. They went and uh, had a, a team meal together and also went out to see a movie. They were rather sad dude rather laid back had the chance to enjoy the holidays and you know that bowling green sideline seemed very subdued when they were down 17 to 7 early in the second half but look was uh, in the first half rather look what's happened ever since then boys maybe they had some leftover i mean that trip to fan had maybe it was a delayed reaction and it they was. were like first half first quarter they were kind of a little yeah, a little sleepy from all the turkey yesterday, or you know, or maybe they saw a bad movie. I know I was yawning after eating all the <laughs> turkey yesterday. So, but the, and then something kicked in for the Falcons, and they have dominated the game since about midway second quarter. Falcons trying to snap a three-game losing streak, close their season on a winning note. Hey, this is par for the course for this rivalry. Home teams don't win when these two teams play. Here's a big run for Pettigrew. Gets across the 40-yard line. First down yardage. The good news is next year the game's at Bowling Green. That's right. So. Well, you, Dave mentioned that it's a senior day here for the Bulls. And while they're out there defensively, these, some of these defensive players could be getting some of their last uh, plays in. Josh Copeland, we've heard his name uh, a couple of times this year out of Fairborn, Ohio. He'll be uh, finishing his career today. Uh, for UB, he's been a regular in that defensive backfield this year. Alan Hayes, senior defensive back. Get to more of the seniors in a moment. I, and it's uh, always nice to call out the names of the seniors. 20 of them playing their last game as a UB Bolt today. Schultz, handoff. Big yardage on first down, a gain of almost around nine into UB territory. Copeland, we mentioned... Uh, Already, he leading the team in tackles today with seven. So he's having a nice finishing game for his career. Alan Hayes, defensive back senior out of Houston, Texas, playing for the first or the uh, last time today here at UB Stadium. Defensively, John City, local product out of Clarence. He has been uh, a heavy contributor over the years. And uh, the big man out of Clarence playing today for the final time as a senior. 18 seniors, by the way, playing their final game as uh, a member of the Falcons squad. Second down and one. Bulls get a nice tackle for loss there. Colby Way in there and uh, Khalil Mack in there as well. Joe Petit, who has got two tackles in the game today. A senior defensive back out of White Plains, New York. Playing for the final time today in front of his home fans. DB Kyle Sims, senior out of Rochester. Went to West Aronacoit High School. He uh, also playing his last game today in a UB Bulls uniform. Ball back in midfield now. Third down. And three. Schultz in the offense wanted to take as much time as possible with the big lead. Pettigrew with the handoff. And he's kept right around midfield. Around that tackle was Fred Branch. He's had a great game and a great career at UB. Leading tackler this season for the Bulls. He had a Rockville, Maryland. Richie Smith, we've heard his name get called today. He's got three tackles in this game against BG today. The senior out of Penargo, Pennsylvania. Big number 54. He's been an anchor along that defensive line this year. He's really had a tremendous season for them, providing a big boost for the line up front in his career. Really, you know, uh, developed over the course of time at UB. He was at media day today with Matt Ostrowski representing the seniors. And Jeff Quinn was... So proud uh, of what Richie's done in terms of how he's grown on the field, off the field. He said 
he studies. He just he, he studies so much. It said he, he that, that he respects that more than anything else about Richie Smith, the preparation that he puts into the game. Two more defensive seniors: Andrew Amor Reggie, the senior out of Rochester, and Gordon Dubuis out of Andover, Maryland. There are all your uh, defensive seniors for the Bulls playing in their last game today. Corey Houston gets out of the way, and did it reach the end zone? Did they save it? No, nope. touchback. So the Bulls will be at their 20-yard line. If we in on the tackle today in what may be in defeat, Bowling Green cruising now, Howard. We'll talk about the seniors on offense when uh, we get back playing their final game. And it has not been a game to remember, unfortunately, for the Bulls. Down big to Bowling Green on Time Warner Cable Sports. Cable Sports Net crew. We hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us here at UB Stadium. Brandon Oliver gets the carry on first down. It has been all bowling green since the middle of the second quarter. And the Falcons have a 42-20 lead. We thank you for maybe skipping out on some Black Friday shopping to hang out and watch a little bit of football with us today on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. We'll get to the seniors here on offense. You guys that are playing their final game visible. Brandon Oliver has two more years left. That's a good thing for Jeff Quinn. And uh, with that run, Oliver now goes over 100 yards on the game. And he just set a another single-season record at UB with his eighth 100-yard rushing performance of the season. Anderson to the far side. It is incomplete. Intended for Ed Young over there. Well, we can start with Anderson, the uh, senior quarterback out of Pickerington, Ohio. We know he transferred in from the University of Cincinnati, came over when uh, Quinn was here, actually came over two, the, a year later after Quinn left Cincinnati. Anderson on the day, a rough one, 7 of 22, just 80 yards, as well as an interception. He has 19 yards rushing. One of his uh, go-to men in the receiving end, senior Marcus Rivers out of Lackawanna, Two catches for 49 yards today. Rivers playing his final game today in front of the UB fans. Took a good look at him. A guy who really, his career started very slowly here at UB. He had only, uh, what, I think seven career catches before last season, and he'll end up around top ten in terms of career catches. Anderson under pressure, throws it away. He wanted Rivers on the far side. Maybe a late hit because a flag comes out from the end of the play over by the UB sideline. Ed Young, who you've seen involved today offensively, a couple of catches, senior out of Fort Worth, Texas. A personal foul call against BG, so that'll extend the Buffalo drive. Player that maybe we'll see at the end of the game. I wonder if Jeff Quinn will uh, let him come in for a couple of the snaps. Corey Jurgensen, senior quarterback out of Williamston, Michigan. 6'2", 2'33". Jurgensen had some snaps a couple of years ago and uh, is one of the backup quarterbacks on this team. Jacob Shum, the punter, we've heard, of course, from him today. He's been busy, as Howard said. Seven punts, averaging about 33 yards a kick out of Hamburg, New York. He and his family here today for the Senior Day festivities. Ball now at the Bulls' 40. Anderson. Just cannot complete a pass. He missed Fred Lee on that one. What would be helping the UB passing attack, Howard, maybe would have been Terrell Jackson. Mm -hmm. He's a senior today. was out there for senior day. Uh, he and his family out of Temple, Texas. Jackson, of course, uh, just a huge part of this offense. And Anderson just hasn't been able to read the wind all day. It just that ball sails on him again. That was a big injury for the Bulls, losing Terrell Jackson. Not only from the receiving standpoint, from the return game as well. Yep. They've never recovered in terms of punt returns from that injury. Anderson out of the pocket, dumps it off complete. A gain of a few yards on the play, maybe up to the Buffalo 44. Corey Knox, one of the reserve running backs, senior out of Buffalo and JFK High School, celebrating Senior Day festivities today. Offensive lineman Josh Violanti, great career here out of Lackawanna. Big guy, senior, 6'2", 283. And, of course, Matt Ostrowski, what a heartwarming story he has been. We talked to his family at halftime, the senior out of Natrota Heights, Pennsylvania. He is a part of that big season uh, where he's been able to uh, lead Brandon Oliver 
And speaking of Brandon Oliver, another record for him. We'll get to that after this play. Big pass and run for Brandon Oliver into Bowling Green territory. First down bowls as they get inside the 35-yard line. And now Oliver, after these last couple of good plays, has now set another record, Howard. He holds the single-season all-purpose yardage record, passing James Starks. Starks came in with a 1,694 all-purpose yards, and now Oliver over 1,700 for the season, actually 1,718 up to the minute. Bulls trying to just get uh, some something for the pride here as far as the offense is concerned. Pass complete to Fred Lee, spun around on the far side, stays inbounds, they'll run the clock. Last senior we want to mention on offense, the tight end, Aaron Conacher out of Jamestown. And uh, that is your seniors on the UB offensive side. 20 in total playing their final game today. Second down bowls. Second and short. Anderson, pass complete, first down yardage, Brandon Oliver. That ball may have and come the ball loose. ball came out. It Bowling Green says they have it. The whole sideline came up yelling and screaming, our ball, our ball, and pointing the other way, but there's nothing from the officials. The line judge raced up there. No, it still is UB football, and they'll get a if they'll look first down. And their ref mic really hasn't been functioning most of the day. He's holding in the first there down. Okay, okay, there we go. Calling Oliver down. Take a look here and see what happened. Again, broken Ooh, tackle. Ball's I, coming out before I think the ball down. did come out, but yeah. joint possession there at the end always goes to offense, so they'll give it to the Bulls. Anderson to Ed Young inside the 20 down to the 15 yard line. Flag at the end of the play. Senior Maybe on senior the, and Rivers might get called on an yeah. illegal block. He was looking at the, at the official after the flag was thrown, blocking ahead of that play. That's Young's third catch of the day. Dirty run, holding offense number two. Ten yards from the end of the run. Replay first down. Been that kind of a day for the Bulls. Had a couple of really costly penalties that Brandon, and I don't know if the game would have turned out any different, Brian, but the Brandon Oliver touchdown wiped out. I mean, that would have been a spark. No yep. question. They needed something and that would have maybe gotten them back in the game and then the ensue i think it was the ensuing possession where they had the interception in the end zone but that was wiped out by a pass interference penalty and bowling green later scored so uh some very costly penalties against the bulls today but their biggest problem has been their offense uh, just hasn't been able to function since the first quarter really they were good in the first quarter and uh, since then really have not been able to do much of anything Brandon Murray in the backfield now, just to the left of Chaz Anderson. And uh, Anderson forced to roll out of the pocket. I think they're going to get a flag on UB here. Murray for sure looked like he grabbed a guy trying to rush up the middle, but the flag came after that block. It is holding on Buffalo. Maybe he was thinking about it. Holding. Offense number 78. Nope. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Do you play first down? That penalty on Matt Ostrowski. So the Bulls back up with yet another penalty on the offense. They finally had a good offensive drive going and uh, thinking maybe they can get some points here, but back-to-back -back penalties on Buffalo, moving them backwards. Now at the Bowling Green 34-yard line with six and a half to go here in the fourth quarter. And we'll talk uh, in the remaining time we have here. Brian was just going through all the seniors talk a little bit about who's coming back and uh you know what spots or what questions might be there for jeff quinn in terms of what he's got to answer for next season thank goodness brandon oliver's back next season and two more actually next season and the one after that oliver gets the carry trying to bounce off a tackler or can't gets to at the 32 33 you know alex newts is, was injured he'll come back very talented receiver sophomore from grand island You've got most of the offensive line coming back as well. But they definitely will have some issues at receiver. I always wonder what James Starks' career records would have been, Howard. Let's remember, Starks missed his entire senior season. Remember that with injury? Yeah. And 
many projected starts is a very higher draft pick, but that's injury, that senior year, he missed it all, and that pushed him back a little. But luckily for him, he's able to pursue and uh, get himself a successful NFL start to his career. Devin Hughes goes up for that ball at about the 25-yard line. Of course, Chaz Anderson is, is done just one year here after coming over here for his uh, Masters. Most people, I think, are expecting Joe Licata, who will probably redshirt. He has not played this season. be a redshirt freshman to take over. But it remains to be seen. Licata was pretty impressive in the, the spring and the camp. And uh, Jeff Quinn had some uh, praise for him at the preseason media days. Anderson pump fake now throws wide open receiver and he bounces it. That's just the footwork that has been hampering Anderson all day again right there. Pump fake, get your feet reestablished before you make that throw. Instead, he lets it go while he's off balance and it doesn't get there. Especially on a day like today with that wind. I mean, Anderson's got to know. He's played so many years of football. I've got to be planted and ready to go. Here. Yeah, see, he just throws it kind of midair. Of course it's not going to get there in time. You're also going to need some help at tight end. Really didn't have much of a contribution. There was no one single tight end, but even as a group, they didn't really get much from them this season. Pass for the end zone, batted away, actually out of bounds, incomplete. They wanted Ed Young, but double coverage for Bowling Green, so the Bulls turn it over on down. Bowling Green dominating 42-20. Their ball can get back. Time for the table. Back at UB Stadium, a record-setting day for sophomore running back Brandon Oliver. Single-season records for carries, 100-yard games, all-purpose yards, and the best single-rushing-yard season for UB in terms of Division I football. All of those records set today by Brandon Oliver. Congratulations to him, and certainly he will be a focal point of this program going forward the next couple of years. Bowling Green with the ball and the 22-point lead. As we bring you the final five minutes of the 2011 season here on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet. And that play still, running play still going. We mentioned for BG Howard how they got to be excited about their future with their sophomore quarterback. You can say the same about UB as they'll transition to quarter, from one quarterback to another, from Anderson to, as we said, possibly Joe Licata or somebody else. Uh, they will have their rusher, Brandon Oliver, to kind of smooth that transition. Obviously, if you're coming in as a new, new quarterback, you'd love to have an established running game, and UB, at least we know, already will have that coming back. And Matt Ostrowski, assuming the guys keep their starting spots, which you know I really probably shouldn't assume, but Matt Ostrowski is the only senior on that offensive line. So right now four starters, at least guys that started today, are back next season. Schultz just handing off, and you'd think that would be the uh, and off the plan the rest yep. of this day. And offensively. Buffalo, teams first, 30 seconds timeout. All right, UB uh, taking a timeout there, I guess a little surprising. Alec Newts, one of their better receivers, Howard, uh, yep. will be coming back, we hope, obviously, uh, healthier after his season-ending injury. He's only uh, in his sophomore season right now out of Grand Island, so that will be Likely one of the big targets coming back. Rivers goes to graduation at receiver. Jackson goes at graduation to a graduation, as is Ed Young. So there's three senior receivers there. And I mentioned tight ends. They had, just trying to check the stats, they had combined for 10 catches. Dennison had have one, one today. today. So that 11 catches combined all season right. from your tight ends. Let's take a look at, the, as there's a timeout, the max standings. UB, with the loss today, will finish sixth. They had a chance to move up into a tie. Miami lost this week, so UB could have moved into a tie for fourth with Miami, although Miami beat Buffalo head-to-head. -head, but the Bulls will drop to two and six in the MAC. Uh, one win MAC season last year, two MAC wins this season, and will finish sixth in the MAC East Division, which I think is where they were actually picked in the preseason poll. I think UB and Akron were the bottom two teams in the coaches' poll preseason. Ohio has clinched the MAC East already. So they're in the MAC championship game. Toledo and Northern Illinois, as UB calls timeout. And that they have one timeout left. Toledo and Northern Illinois are tied 
for the Mac e, or excuse me West, West lead at six and one. Both of those are uh, teams are playing today. Northern Illinois has the tiebreaker. They were home for Eastern Michigan, Toledo at Ball State. If they remain tied, Northern has the tiebreaker. So Ohio will play the winner of, uh, well, the team that comes out. They're not playing head-to-head. Either Toledo or Northern Illinois in the MAC championship game. And Ohio's going to get a bowl bid, right? They're 8-3. and three. Temple, I'm sure, figures, you know, that 7-4 and four with one game left. They are certainly bowl eligible. And maybe the MAC will get three or four, you know, a think, handful of bowl bids. Yeah, I think there's three definites that go: Northern, Toledo, and Ohio. And maybe Temple ends up being a fourth team from the MAC that ends up going, especially from a, a larger TV market like Temple is with Philadelphia. They, it might be attractive to to some bowl th- game where they would invite Temple. Wait, Toledo and Northern, both very exciting teams to watch. Fair catch call for by Akoya Houston. Exciting quarterbacks, high scoring offenses. They played. I think it was 63-60, yep. uh, the, t- the game they played head-to-head earlier this season. So those are, you know, the, the, not that they travel well, you know, in terms of fans, but in terms of the product you would see, they both offer some exciting teams. That game here with Northern Illinois was a whale of a football game with Northern winning at the end and uh, the Bulls missing the extra point. Well, Friday, December 2nd, so next, a week from tonight, it'll be the MAC uh, championship game that's at four field in detroit and uh, ohio is already in we'll see who ends up going from the west as we said it's northerns just needs a victory today to, to clinch that spot and you mentioned it earlier brian i want to want to talk about the mac here in a moment and what might lie ahead for jeff quinn and the bulls they'll start here from their 33 first and 10 anderson leaves the pocket and uh, heads for the sideline it, it, it isn't that, even though the Bulls are 2-6 and six and they're going to finish in 6th, it doesn't take that much to turn around in the MAC. And I think even in the East, which for years, you've seen it for a long time, you know, there's not a lot. You know, it's, it, isn't, it isn't really record-wise, you might say, okay, where's Ohio, where's UB? But it doesn't take that much to go back up to the top. You, as you said, first get a good quarterback. And Bowling Green looks good in the future with Schiltz. Nice leaping grab for Fred Lee. Get it, they have a good running back in Brandon Oliver. Get a good quarterback. Get an opportunistic defense. That was the formula for UB. Drew Willey, James Starks, and a defense that took the ball away and scored. Yep. And they won the MAC. Look at Miami. Last year, they're the MAC champions. The previous year, they went 1-11. and yep. You can turn it around just by having... Uh, you know, that one key offensive player. Now, UB may have to do it with their running back, with Oliver coming back, but who knows what the future is going to bring next year at QB. Maybe that is that one-two punch that they had with Willie and Starks. Oliver gets the handoff. And for those interested, I always am. I, I think part of the fun of covering a team, especially if you do it on a regular basis, who's the non-conference schedule? We know what the max schedule is going to look like. They're going right. to play all the teams in the East Division and then a couple from the West, but Next year's non-conference for UB. We'll go ahead and get, get, get it after this first down play. The Bulls finally getting a chance to move the chains, keep this drive going. Yeah, Oliver's run got him a first down from the 44 now. Under three minutes to go in this season. Anderson to the ball sailed way. We've seen that a number of times today where the ball just sails way high over receivers. So who's on the sketch? Next year here at UB Stadium for UB in their non-conference game. Pitt will be here. That's pretty much the headliner. And Morgan State will also be here. As uh, Those will be the two non-conference home games. On the road, headlo- two really nice places to go. At Georgia, down in the SEC, to take on the Bulldogs. And at UConn. They return the game uh, from UConn here. Fred Lee can't hang on to that pass. But, I mean, that's that's if you want to uh, want to plan a, a fun Maybe a weekend getaway with your nice buddies. Stadium. You can head to Red UConn Shirt is stadium. drivable. Yeah. Or if you really want to go all out, going to Georgia, going to those SEC schools, those I mean, are. Uh, I vote for that trip. Yeah. Do you want to go? Are we are we gonna go take a trip? Let's do it. We've been to UConn, and We've it's a nice UConn. stadium. Don't yeah. get me wrong, but you know I don't really need to go to what East Hartford. You know, and it's. I think I'd rather go to Athens. Probably the similar similar atmosphere that we uh, saw when we were down covering the team with, when they were at Auburn. A lot of fun. Anderson rolling to his right. And uh, we'll try and get to the first down marker. 
And again, in terms of who's coming here, well, you can almost is first down. we pretty much know that other than the Western opponent. We already mentioned Morgan State and Pitt. Um, they'll re return it and flip-flop the MAC East teams. So Temple will return and come here since the Bulls played at Temple. Miami of Ohio was a road game this year, so they'll Miami will be home here. And uh, then, of course, we'll still have to find out who the uh, team from the West will be that ends up coming here as well. Bulls will be at BG, at Akron, at Ohio next year among their uh, their East opponents. Brandon Oliver down there the 30-yard line. And, you know, we, we talked about the offense. Just quickly to go through the defense in terms of key players. For an injured Bowling Green player. We have a Bowling Green player injured on the field. Up front, Richie Smith graduates. It's a big loss on the defensive line. A lot of other key players coming back. Although Stephen Means, even though he had a when nice play today the with the interception for touchdown, two minutes and eight seconds, two zero eight. Kind of a kind of a so-so season for Stephen Means. I was expecting bigger things from him and didn't really see that. Linebacking core: Fred Branch, leading tackler this year, graduates. Khalil Mack is back as a junior. Uh, Lee Skinner had a tremendous year as a redshirt freshman. He's back next season. And the secondary, everybody's coming back. They graduated the entire secondary, and uh, they did not do well today when all was said and done against Schultz and Kamar Jordan and Eugene Cooper. But, but I think Lester, Courtney Lester and uh, Naja Johnson certainly made some strides at cornerback. There are, I think, some issues at safety for the Bulls. But um, there were some growing pains for sure in the secondary, Brian, but they got a lot of valuable Please playing You set the play clock to 40 seconds. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, let's remember, too, uh, it was about four or five years ago, there was a group of young men in the secondary that all ended up playing together for four years and doing quite well, including Devontae Shannon, Dominic Cook. I mean, the, that group was one of UB's best by the time they were finished. Anderson, pass to Brandon Oliver complete. Oliver gets inside the Bowling Green 20. That's a first down. Clock showing 155 left. You know the Bulls would... Just like to get a touchdown. It won't uh, change the outcome of the game, but just to have something to celebrate. It hasn't really been much the last three quarters. Hand off to Oliver. Just shy of the 15. Bulls have one timeout left if they want to save themselves a little time at some point, try and get it into the end zone. Bulls will finish with one win better than they did last season. Pass to Ed Young. And he should have a first down. Yep, it will be first down and goal for Buffalo. A 2-10 record under then first-year head coach Jeff Quinn. And now this year under Quinn for the second year around, they improved by one. And the, But they'll and be 3-9. and nine. I was going to say, but, you know, there'll be games they'll look at. You know, they hung with Pitt a little while, but ended up losing by 19. The Ball State game, I think the Ball State game and the Northern Illinois game, will be games that will just drive them crazy. The Ball State game, you got a lead in the fourth quarter. You give up a touchdown drive, lose by three. Northern Illinois, you have this great rally, and, and you miss the extra point and lose 31-30 when it looked like you were going overtime. Those are two games, conference games, big games, one of them on the road, that they just weren't able to find a way to win. Anderson overthrows Devin Hughes in the end zone, and it's been that kind of day. That, If you're just joining us, that in a nutshell has been Chaz Anderson's day, unfortunately. He's been off the target does not look comfortable pretty much all day long. He's now 16 of 37 on the day. Just uh, no touchdowns, one interception, 154 yards, 157 yards, excuse me. You see the clock there? 117 to go. Second down and goal. Anderson swings it out off of Ed Young. And this team has to figure out how to win road games, too. Uh, they'll end up being 3-3 three and three at home. They'll be disappointed. They wanted to get that winning record here at UB Stadium, but they went 0-6 on the road. And, they, you know, if, if you're gonna, needless to say, if you're going to contend for a division championship in the MAC, you've got to win some road games in conference play. Third down and goal coming up. Anderson throws in and out of the hands of Ed Young again. 
So Ed Young unable to make a catch there, and that'll bring up fourth down and goal with 112 to go. See if UB here can finish it. This could be their last play offensively of the season. They'd like to maybe finish it with a score. If not, BG can come out and kneel it for a couple of plays, and they can end this day. And the BG seniors, you can tell how the sidelines are different, Howard. If you look at the BG sideline, they're all up. They're all up by the sidelines, up by the coaching staff, cheering their, some of their reserves and some of their seniors on defensively. Anderson on fourth, under pressure. He's going to have to try and go for it. Anderson towards the goal line, reaches out with the ball, and gets in for the touchdown. So Chaz Anderson, with that last effort, Putting his arms out with the football, gets it over the plane of the goal line, and the Bulls get the touchdown. Well, for Chaz Anderson, he goes in for his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, and it took a lot of effort there at the end to get it done. Breaks about two tackles, bounces off one, stretches it across. There was a little hesitation <laughs> from the line judge, and they end up go ahead and count this one. And with 101 to go, UB's going to go for two. And we'll see again. Anderson was thinking about throwing and then realized, got to try and go for it myself. And there you see that last minute lunge, able to get it across the goal line, and they're going to stop, I think. And, well, I shouldn't say that reviewing because I think Bowling Green might have called timeout. Was yeah. Are they challenging this? And our referee headed over to uh, talk to Dave Clawson. Sean Bowling Smith. Green's head coach is challenging the ruling of the field of a touchdown. Well, the they get one challenge. On the, review. the teams get one challenge in college football, and that'll extend our uh, afternoon by another minute or two here. <laughs> All right, let's take a look, and uh, we'll check a replay here from our crew. And again, the video replay officials are seeing the same angles as we get. And remember, it was called a touchdown on the field. So do we see something that clearly says it's not a touchdown? Keep an eye on Anderson's knees. See, the knee, I think the arm went forward when the knee hit. I think it was simultaneous is what I'm yeah. trying to say. I think he broke the plane. And again, this is kind of like the touchdown we saw earlier. It doesn't have to cross the white. It just has to touch the white as they say break the plane. I don't think there's enough visual evidence to dispute the call, to overturn the call, I, I should say. that first view is probably going to be our best look After at further it. review, yeah. the ruling on the field stands. It is a touchdown. Bowling Green will be charged with their team's first timeout, and they lose their coach's challenge. All right, so the touchdown stands. It's 42-26 with 101 to go. And a two-point try coming up, and then I assume an onside kick attempt after that. Many of you watching right now, of course, if you're uh, watching this, you're probably a college football fan. There's only, what, two undefeated teams left in Division One: Number one, LSU, and then Houston. <laughs> about LSU that? is playing today <laughs> against Arkansas. You want to try and put the BCS into a big mix, a big mess. <laughs> They're losing to Arkansas 14 to nothing in the second quarter. Anderson for the two-point conversion into the corner of the end zone leaping grab by Fred Lee so the Bulls get the two-pointer 42 28 down 14 with 61 ticks left and well at least get ready for the onside kick yeah at least something to feel good about if that is the last throw of Chaz Anderson's career mm -hmm. and Fred Lee there on the receiving end a nice little resurgence from Lee here in these last couple of home games using his height Anderson just a little touch pass there and say, all right, Fred, go up and get it. And he does. Makes a nice job there to add to their point total. It's now 42 to 28. Well, like you said, you know, it's his last game. It has not been a fun day for Chaz Anderson. At least he has the touchdown. And then this two-point conversion to make it 42-28. So we expect the hands team on the field for Bowling Green. And uh, I would assume that the Bulls will go for the onside kick here. Patrick Clark will put the ball on the tee at the 30-yard line. You can see all of the Bowling Green players, well, everybody but one, up on the Bulls' side of the field. All inside the 50-yard line. You can see the front line there, and just to the left of that, 
Another five guys right behind them. Only one Falcon player back. And Bowling Green calls time. Time out. Bowling Green. I don't know why. Team second charge they time don't know out. It's coming. That'll be a 30 second time <laughs> so out. Dave Clawson and his special teams, they want to make sure everything is uh, taken care of. We should remind you that we've got high school football games coming up tomorrow. Congratulations again to Letchworth out of Section 5. Won a state championship earlier today at the Dome in Syracuse. First ever state championship. Tim McMullen, the head coach of the Indians, making their first appearance in the finals, and they go home a winner. Great season for Letchworth, and uh, the community really into that football program, so congratulations to them. We'll have the game with um, Southwestern is playing Sunday. I have to remember what day this is. I think it's at 11, 11 a.m. kickoff. And then Southwest. Orchard Park playing Sunday night at 6. At six yeah. And uh, both of them going for state championships. Southwestern trying for a third in four years. OP going for their first title since 2008. Southwestern won in 08 09. The wind blows the ball off the tee. And uh, we'll have the high school football games here on Time Warner Cable Sports Net. Good luck to Jay Siriani and the Trojans. Good luck to Team Tundo and the Quakers as they try and bring uh, state championships back to Section 6. So two kickers out there. See which way they go with it. Clark and Farden. All right, Howard, trying to get the ball on the team. It? Clark or Fart, come on. You, all your video say, scouting you do? I'm going to say Clark. They can't get the ball yeah. on the tee. So now Fart <laughs> may have to hold it. The symbolic of the uh, of the day for the Bulls here? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he's going to have the back judge hold it, so someone's going to have to hold it. I think maybe. Excuse me, Mr. Referee, can you please uh, hold <laughs> this for us here? We need both kickers. Would you so. mind just, uh, just a finger? You know, like when you're wrapping a gift and your wife asks you just to hold this thing. Right, exactly. <laughs> So I think Scott Pettigrew is going to hold it. And then you still have to figure out whether it's Farden or Clark who will actually kick it. It may. Looks like Farden. Huh? Let's yeah. see. Nope, there's Clark. There's Farden. It is Clark. Clark. Off of a Bowling Green player bouncing loose and out of bounds. So the Falcons will take over with one minute even left on the clock. And the contingent of fans, most of the UB fans have headed out. And there's a large contingent of those in the orange and brown to our left that are sticking around to serenade their team on an effort well done today. You see, they got the bounce. They got the ball rolling around. But I suppose you want to maybe try and have one guy like a defender on the sideline, you know, like a goalie there trying to keep it from going anywhere. So the Bulls defense is on the field, and uh, Buffalo has one timeout left. We'll see if uh, Jeff Quinn decides to use it. I'm sure that uh, Bowling Green will go into the victory formation here. Two kneels or three, depending upon whether or not UB uses a timeout or not. I don't. Think, I wouldn't expect Jeff Quinn to use one here. Bowling Green will close their season at five I'm and out. seven. Well, Buffalo team third. Prediction final business for me out. ends with another <laughs> wrong one. <laughs> I guess he figured if Clawson's going to take it on the onside kick, I'm going to burn my last time out. I don't yeah. know. UB will finish the season 3-9 and nine overall and 2-6 and six in the MAC. Let's check in one more time with our sideline reporter, David Miller, who's going to lose out on some post-game face time. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Dave. Great job down on the field today. And, uh, yeah, BG will end with a win. They'll only have to snap it one more time. The Bulls out of timeouts. <laughs> They've got a hug from the mascot. <laughs> from the BG Falcon. How awesome is that? Well, they can't talk, so that's the, you know, that's that's the way they communicate. Right? Sure, exactly. yeah. Yeah, that 
nothing in the third quarter is what swung this game. As Dave pointed out, it was 21-20 at the half, and then Bowling Green put this thing away in the third quarter and closed it out in the fourth. And uh, the UB Bulls, a uh, disappointing end to the 2011 season. They had beaten Akron last week, 51-10. to Guys were pretty fired up this week. Jeff Quinn said there were a lot of smiling faces and a lot of energy at practice, and he talked about making this their championship game. But unfortunately, the Bulls, it started out well, but the Bulls ended up falling uh, 42-28 to Bowling Green and uh, closed the season at 3-9. and nine. As you see the teams gathering at uh, on the field, and uh, it will be a disappointing end to uh, kind of an end season. I mean, it's, it's more wins than last year for... Uh, Buffalo, but uh, certainly not where Jeff Quinn wanted it to be with uh, just the three wins overall and uh, two wins in the MAC. So we'll bring things back up here in the broadcast booth. So, you know, again, it's a better one-loss record, but it's certainly not good enough, Brian. So how, how do you put 2011 in perspective? Well, I think uh, when you start and look at the positives, you look individually. Brandon Oliver headlines it individually in terms of the players he had an outstanding season to break a record of now a player that's in the national football league i think that's your headliner that's the guy you build off of going into the next season defensively we know at times it was a struggle but you gain that experience and you hope that they everybody just comes back a year better and they're still ub will have to transition into a new quarterback from next year chance anderson did some good today not so good but we know that his era is over. Now they'll have to look to the future, and they hope that they can get some good quarterback play to now even progress farther from just the three wins that they had this year. And uh, that will be one of the big questions, what will happen at quarterback. 42-28, the final. Bowling Green defeats Buffalo to close out the 2011 season. Here on Sidewalk Cable Sports Net.